following is a presentation of ESPN on ABC. Welcome to ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. And today's Big 12 matchup between Oklahoma and Texas. You are looking live at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, where one of the special rights of the college season is about to begin. The Oklahoma Sooners pouring on to the floor of the Cotton Bowl. Their fans wearing crimson. The other half of the Cotton Bowl wearing burnt orange today. It is the 108th Red River rivalry with the Texas State Fair as its background. Good afternoon and welcome everybody. Thanks for dropping by. I'm Brent Musburger. Wanted some good Texas barbecue. So I brought my buddy Todd Blackledge along today. <laughs> Todd, on the way to that barbecue, we stopped at the Oklahoma yeah. practice in Norman. What impressed you up there? They were so loose and confident, particularly Bob Stoops. And then the other thing, defensively, I think they're playing better than I've seen them in the last few years. They've changed their scheme. They put more speed onto the field. It fits their personnel and it fits the league they play in. Now, Todd, Texas has really struggled the last few years against Oklahoma. What's the key for the Longhorns today? I hope they got the same wake-up call that Oklahoma did because the last two years this game has been over at halftime. They have to come out, make some plays, take care of the football, prove early on that they came to play. All right, we're also going to be hearing from Heather Cox today. Kickoff is coming up. The horns are ready to roll onto the field. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local ABC stations. You look down on our scene here at the Cotton Bowl. Temperature is the touch muggy today, and uh, Heather Cox, the Texas Longhorns, will handle the ball first. And Brent, as you know, David Ash is out, so Case McCoy is in. And Case is a very confident player this week, saying, this is the type of game I could be remembered for for the rest of my life. But Texas coaches were quick to warn Case this week that your strength, your moxie, your gamesmanship could also be your weakness. I don't need a riverboat gambler. Don't do anything extraordinary. Just be a mailman. Now, Mac Brown's parting words moments ago before quarterback took the field. Don't win the game. Try to manage the game and no turnovers. Well, the last two years, as Todd Blackley's pointed out, it's been a long afternoon for the Longhorns. In the first half, Todd, they've been outscored 70 to 12. Yeah, and you know, two years ago it was turnovers that did them in. Last year it was offensive ineptitude. They started the game with four straight three and outs. They must get off to a good start today. Matt Brown, six and nine against Oklahoma. Bob Stoops, 9-5, and five, his career record against the Longhorns. What do you expect to see early on here from Young McCoy? Well, he threw the ball 45 times in their last game against Iowa State. I don't think they want him to throw that much. The biggest thing with Case McCoy, he doesn't have an overpowering arm. He's pretty accurate. He must throw the ball on time against this very fast Oklahoma defense. Take care of the ball. He's done a nice job as a starter so far in his three games. So they bring Johnson alongside number 32, Jonathan Gray, who has been the key, and now they sprint him out, and they come with Johnson on a cutback run. 
And a very strong first down play for about nine yards as we take a look now at today's Chick fil A impact players, Todd. Well, when Texas has the football, Jonathan Gray, who you talked about, has really come on, averaging over 100 yards a game the last four games. And Mike Davis, their veteran receiver, has to step up. Eric Stryker, outstanding pass rusher, and Aaron Colvin, one of the best corners in the country. So they bring a little end around with, with Johnson again, coming off the wing, and that's a first down. Frank Shannon makes the stop twice in a row. They've used Johnson. Well, again, this team is fast on defense. You're not going to get too many plays on a perimeter, but they didn't need much for the first down. He breaks one tackle, and right there is a great start for Texas. Again, they started the game with four three and outs last year. First possession to get a first down. The ball is at the horns, 37. Here comes Gray, his first carry of the game, and he is thrown for a loss. Dominique Alexander, the freshman from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and a young man with a tremendous upside. Well, this is the guy who's taking the place of their leader on defense, Corey Nelson, who got hurt in the ball game last week. Alexander, very talented. Corey Nelson has been in his ear all week coaching him up. Let's see if McCoy puts it up for the first time against the Sooners. There is Nelson on that far side, put pads on, but he definitely will not play. They run Gray to the 40-yard line, and Alexander again. There is Nelson, and he so wanted to be a part of this team today. And look at that, Todd. He put his shoulder pads on. Well, he's from Dallas, played at Skyline High School right down the road from here, put off his surgery till next Tuesday so that he could help his fellow defensive teammates. Needs seven yards on this third down. Striker number 19 is their best pass rusher down at the bottom. Trying to get there, could not complete for a first down to midfield. Goes to his buddy, Jackson Shipley. Very nice start for Texas so far. Now they're going to line up and go a little tempo after that second first down. This is Shipley's strength, working the middle of the field. They throw that flanker screen outside. Kendall Sanders handling the ball for the first time, but it never got started. The encouraging thing for Texas right now is they've had a little success running the football in this opening possession. They've got two first downs, and they've got some momentum, and they're in Oklahoma territory. Gray directly behind McCoy in the pistol. Play action to him. Pocket holds going nobody downfield. The receivers were working underneath that time, and I think when McCoy turned around, he was looking for somebody to work yep. deep that time. Well, he was looking for Sanders, who got tied up with Colvin on the play, and I think Case just threw that one away. He didn't like what he saw. He didn't want to take a sack, and he lives the play third down here. Major Applewhite. One time Texas quarterback calling the plays for the Hornets, and now he faces a third and eight. Need to reach the Sooners 40 yard line. And when it's third and long, Mike Stoops calls his defense chaos. Yeah. And you saw all that jumping around, hard Fair to start. identify, Number and he got a false offense, start with that penalty, chaos look. And, and it's a little bit of a gray area because they jump. I don't think they yell, but they definitely try to create that offensive line, some nervousness and movement, and they got it on that play. There is the defensive coordinator, brother of head coach Bob Stoops, and now it becomes a third and 13 against chaos Malcolm Brown is in the backfield with Jonathan Gray offensive line holds goes to the middle a perfect strike to Sanders and a first down at the Sooners 30 yard line what a huge third down conversion excellent protection first look at the pocket McCoy has to work out of and then he sees Sanders coming right into the middle of this of his picture and a nice accurate throw but it all started with the protection up front 22 yards on that third down play Horn's first possession of this game Malcolm Brown is the running back, checking with his quarterback. And here comes Malcolm, swinging left, fine run. 
broke the initial tackle as he came across the 30-yard line that time. Good tough run for Brown. Oklahoma, with their speed on defense, I mentioned they changed their overall scheme. They have three down linemen. They put more speed on the field. They love to attack the line of scrimmage. Formation strong to the left. Instead, they bring it right up the middle, behind the middle of that, and that was Brown. Or check that now. Let's see who was the ball carrier that time. Indeed, it was Malcolm Brown. Third down and two play action. Brown got it and crosses, and I'll tell you, this is an impressive opening drive. Time. It's very impressive, and it's very smart by Major Applewhite. He's going tempo with a bigger lineup in. Like the trade-off for Oklahoma of getting more speed on the field, you have smaller bodies at linebacker. And right now, Texas is running the football right at this Oklahoma defense. Espinoza is the center. Applewhite's upstairs. He signals the plays down below, tells him on the headset, and the signaler passes it on. And here's Jonathan Gray. And he is short of the 15-yard line. That will bring up second down coming up. So Todd Blackley's mentioned that offensive line. Hawkins, Hopkins, Espinoza, Walters, and Estelle. And those fellas have done a terrific job on this opening drive. Gray back in now. And he battles close to the first down. This will be third and short coming up. Now take a look at it. They're not real deep. they got to stay healthy because a couple of their key backups are out of this game. Quick strike outside Shipley. No first down. Read beautifully by Quentin Hayes, the safety junior from Lancaster, Texas, makes a big play. It was read well, but it's a bad pass. You don't want your receiver to have to jump for that throw. You want him to catch that quick and get upfield towards that first down marker. So that would signal Anthony Farah. He is five of six kicking field goals. This would be a 31-yarder. His long of the season is 47. It's from near the left hash. Knocks it down. Texas strikes first. But Oklahoma makes a couple of key tackles and holds them to three. This telecast available in high definition brought to you by Vizio. Todd Blackledge, good sideline for Oklahoma. Yeah, well, first of all, coming off the field, Dominique Alexander, the guy who has stepped in for Corey Nelson, got an earful from Mike Stoops. Well, now Mike's calmed down a little bit. Bob talked to him. Mike said a few more. And then Corey Nelson, this is why he's here. This is why he put off surgery, why he's in uniform today, to stay in the ear of his replacement, Dominique Alexander. Showing strong leadership on that Sooner sideline. So Clay and Finch are back deep for this kickoff. Rose has the ball on the tee, and he'll kick it away for the Horns. And he'll come out on the 25, and we take a look now at today's Chick-fil-A impact players again, Ty. One of the best players, I think, in college football is the fullback, Trey Millard, for Oklahoma. Had a big game in this game last year. I expect him to be a factor. And defensively, Malcolm Brown on the inside, Jackson Jeffcoat on the outside of that defensive front, probably the strength of this Texas defense. They have to really stand out today. And, of course, a couple of games ago, number 10, Blake Bell took over as the quarterback. And the Horns have their first lead since 2009. Remember, they've lost those last three. Brennan Clay in as the running back for Bell. And they bring it in the round. Sterling Shepard with great speed breaks out close to midfield. Last year in this ball game, Texas had 14 missed tackles. Already a couple on the very first offensive play for Oklahoma. They have bodies there. They just don't make sure tackles. 24 yards on that game. Then they pick the tempo up after a first down, and they bring Clay across midfield. And this will be second down and 10 for the young man known as the Bell Dozer. But he's got becoming the complete leader for him. He really is. I mean, he's doing a great job of taking care of the football. Very accurate short thrower, not as accurate throwing down the field. Still a threat to run. They show that end around look. Bell moving right, throws it out of bounds. And it'll be third and seven. Now, when we take a look 
at his career. And there he is, used mainly as a backup, and he was a rushing quarterback. He coming for Landry Jones. And this year, no rush touchdowns yet. And here he is, facing a third and seven. We we'll take a look at the youngster throwing the ball here early. Offensive line holds, got the first down, dropped it to Brennan Clay, the running back. Good read, good patience by Bell, looking downfield, doesn't like what he sees downfield, knows where his outlet receiver is, gets the ball to Clay out in space. Now Keith Ford, a freshman at the Sooners, want to take a look at from Cypress, Texas, is in. He's number 21. For you folks who have not seen him, he is the running back back there. That sort of inverted full house look. And there's a handoff to your man, Trey Millard, and he is close to the first down. Phillips with the stop for the horns. And again, it is that power running game against the Texas defense. Well, they're going to see if Texas can defend the run. They've had trouble all season, and that's what Oklahoma does well. Now they hand it off and they pick up the first down with Keith Ford. There's your look at the freshman right there. He's got top end speed. If he gets daylight, look out. He's across the 25 yard line, first and 10. We talked about the Longhorns being impressive with the first drive. Well, how about the Sooners now behind their offensive line? Eichert is the center, he's the quarterback. And they basically have two fullbacks in the game. Ripkowski is lined up as a tight end and Millard in the backfield. There is Millard. Power right, nothing doing that time. And Cedric Reed makes a great play. Santos there to help. And there's your offensive line for the Sooners. Thompson, Sheed, Eichert, Irwin, and Williams. Big fellas. Well, we saw the Oklahoma defense come up with a couple key stops to slow that drive down. There's one for the Texas defense. See what they do on this second and long situation. Brendan Clay checks back in. Texas with four rushmen, and they fire it to the outside to Tevin Jackson, his first catch. That's short of the first down. Duke Thomas makes the play. That is what is critical for Texas's defense in this game. Last week against TCU, TCU did a great job of tackling the receivers after short receptions, not allowing yards after the catch. You must do this with Oklahoma because they're going to throw the ball underneath a lot and see how well you tackle. Third down and four for the Sooner offense. Got to be alert of Bell running on this play. Backs up, lobs one, end zone, dropped in the end zone by Clay. And that will bring the field goal team on. This should have been six. He had him. It was not well covered. The linebacker, Edmund, was out of position. And Bell knew that he missed one right there. When you have a guy wide open, Brent, throw it right at him. Don't worry about leading him if you got a guy wide open. Michael Honeycutt holds the record. This will be a 34-yarder. He's at 12 of 13 this year. He's from the left half. We're tied. Three all. But for the Sooners, it was what could have been. Brennan Clay streaking out of the backfield. And they settled with a field goal. ABC College Football, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings, the official hangout for NCAA football. Hyundai, new thinking, new possibilities. And GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. The Cotton Bowl, Dallas, Texas. Red River rivalry. Half the crowd wearing crimson, and the other half in burnt orange. Very similar start for both teams. Both offenses moved the ball well. When they got into scoring territory, the defenses both stood up and made a couple plays. And there we have a 3-3 ball game. Kendall Sanders is back deep.
Roger Bergeron has checked in. He'll also be one of the return men. Hudson with the ball on the tee for the Sooners. And before Texas stalled on their drive, they had converted three of four third down plays on their opening drive. Hudson nailed one and make it two. Coming out on the 25. Now, the last drive, Texas had nice run pass balance, and on third down, they were very accurate throwing the football. Of course, it starts with good protection, which Coyce McCoy, McCoy got, but then he was on target with his throws on third down. The only third down he missed was the throw to Shipley, the ball that was a little bit high, but a very impressive first drive for the Longhorn offense. Their ace receiver, Mike Davis, did not get into that drive. Jonathan Gray now checks into the backfield in case McCoy continues as the quarterback. Gray up the middle. Four yards. You know, one thing we didn't mention, Oklahoma is missing another starter, not just Nelson, who's hurt. Jordan Phillips, their starting nose guard, has a back injury, did not practice this week. He is out, so he has a replacement, and Jordan Wade is his replacement, and that's right where Texas is attacking right now, right in the inside running game against Oklahoma. Second and five, they'd probably like to have that fourth, third down play back again just because of that. But they have certainly discovered it as you see Gray powering up there behind Espinosa as Todd told you. Second down and five. They come again, a little short of that first down. So here comes one of those money plays again. Very manageable third down situation, though. They're getting positive gains. You know, this is what an offense calls staying on schedule. No negative plays. Give yourself a chance on third down with either a run or a pass option with this kind of yardage needed. Four substitutions pour in off the Texas sideline on this play. Davis is split out to the left. He has man coverage on the far left. Malcolm Brown in as the running back. And it'll be Malcolm Brown for the first down. Oklahoma tried to bring another guy out on the field. An outside linebacker, P.L. Lindley, number 40. He's a little bigger, but this is excellent blocking straight ahead. The fullback with a nice block to lead the way. First down and 10 for the Horns. McCoy drops it off short and nothing doing on that play because Aaron Halvin swallowed the receiver. Uh, right as I said, staying on schedule offensively, they get a negative play. And that's what Oklahoma likes to do. They like to try to create negative plays behind the line of scrimmage every play. They're very fast and they're very active. And Aaron Colvin read that one quickly. Second and 12. Brown stays in as the running back. Case McCoy needs to be thinking, get part of the yardage here. Maybe half on second and long. Brown trying to get the right edge, and he does come across the 40-yard line. But here comes another one of those big third down plays. Sanchez is the corner who has been matched up on the outside with Davis. But so far, the Horns have not been able to get the ball in number one's hands. Here's your third and eight, and there's Davis. You better watch out for Stryker again. Number 19, here he is right here, kind of creeping in there. Line holes, left side, and there's Shipley. Now and the line judge says he got it. He now he's checking. Place. It's a matter of whether he got forced out and then came back in, and that's what they're going to say. If he goes out of bounds on his own, he can't be the first guy to touch the ball. They're ruling that he was forced out of bounds, and then he's able to come in and make the catch. So Julian Wilson, number two, forced him out of bounds before he came back. First and ten, and the ball across the Sooners' 40-yard line. McCoy hit as he releases. Goes deep, far side, battle for the ball. They were trying to get the ball to Davis. Sanchez was there. McCoy was blistered by Eric Stryker. Todd Blackley has been telling you that. I'll tell you what Mike Stoop said. Best blitzer I've ever had on my defense. Right there, number 19. Well, they got to hope that he stays in the ballgame right now because this is going to be a personal foul. 
roughing the passer, potentially a targeting foul on Stryker. Be a huge, huge turnaround in this game. Good coverage by Sanchez, but that's because McCoy wasn't able to get everything. Oh, my ball. goodness. I thought that was a legal hit looking at it first. I mean, he caught him. See, you're not allowed to go with your hands, forearms, or any part above the neck or shoulders. They didn't call that. They just called the penalty. Bergeron checks in as a running back now. I mean, Stryker blistered McCoy. Bergeron picks his daylight. Fumble! Battle for the loose ball. Oklahoma they're says they've down. got it, and they're saying he's down. Yeah. Well, Texas got a fortuitous call on a fumble last week against Iowa State. Let's see if his knee was down before the ball came out. Yes, I think he was down before the ball popped out. Boy, the body was on top of the defensive player as he goes down. There it oh. is. Ball's coming oh, out. I'm telling you, out. this is a replay. It may yep. turn this over. The body was on top of the defensive player, Frank Shannon. So stay tuned on this one. Let's go back now. We've had some things happen here. Yeah. Todd, by the tone of your voice, I thought you thought that Stryker should have been penalized for targeting. I didn't see it, but you did with the hands. If the hands, forearm, any part of the body hits a defenseless player in the head or neck area, that's a targeting foul. So they didn't, they didn't do that, and they're going to take a look at this one. And I think you're right. I think the ball the, did come out. The Oklahoma was crowd was cheering the replay. They saw what we saw, and it's one of those freak things. Now watch the defensive player's body underneath. Knee doesn't hit. Ball coming out. Yeah. It's going to be Oklahoma football. And see if the elbow would have hit first, he would have been down. But the elbow did not hit the ground before the ball came out. Still in the air, no elbow on the ground, football out. During this three-game Oklahoma win streak over Texas, turnovers have been a big story. Oklahoma is plus eight in the turnover margin in the three-game win streak. And Mac Brown knows ball security in this series has been a huge issue. Now, I want to go back with this hit. Okay, Todd, you you walked through what you thought you saw. Well, I didn't see it until I saw the replay, but he clearly hit him with his hand in the helmet, in the head and neck area. Now, whether you don't determine he was a defenseless player, I guess that's the ruling. It was a personal foul. It was not considered a targeting foul. And supposedly, the change to now, the I want targeting to show, is... I want to show this review. angle. Well, the right hand, a little finger up on the face mask area. Very, very close. Um, See, the, the change here in the last couple weeks is that every foul like that is going to be reviewed. It, but, you know, by rule, I'm assuming they did. After further review, the ball was fumbled and recovered by Oklahoma. So when you come back, it will be Oklahoma football coming out from the 20-yard line after the turnover. The Cotton Bowl and ESPN's got two great games later today. 5 p.m. Eastern, Michigan takes on Penn State. Big Ten battle. Then at 8.30 on College Football Primetime. Presented by Hampton Hotels. Johnny Menzel and Texas A&M take on Ole Miss. Kirk Herbstreit on his way to Oxford. He'll work with your buddy Brad right. Nessler in that game tonight. Todd, nice to have you with us, my friend. It's good to be here. Love doing this game. Yeah, this is one of the best, isn't it? It is. Damian Williams now, a power back into that backfield for OU. Another former quarterback, Josh Heupel, calling the plays for the Sooners. How about that? A couple of quarterbacks who played in this game. Applewhite and Heupel over here for the Sooners. Banging right straight ahead with the power back that time and digs with the tackle for the Horns. It's a very important response drive for the Texas defense because they played well in the first possession when it got into scoring territory. 
second down and six. They come with a little tempo. This is going to be third and long because Santos, wow. one of Greg Robinson's linebackers who's been learning under him for the last couple of weeks. Remember, they're without Hicks. We talked about Nelson on the other side. And, of course, the Horns are without Jordan Hicks, their best linebacker. He was lost. Injured a couple games ago for them. Sometimes so both teams shorthanded time. Yeah, sometimes when you go with tempo, you hope to get the defense out of position. That time, they got themselves out of position, and Texas responded with a great play. Third and four for Bell and the Sooners. The Horns show pressure along that line. They're coming. They got a shot at Bell. Intercepted as a result. His first interception of the season. Touchdown, Texas! Big Chris Whaley, 300 pounds, rumbles in. And I do mean rumbles. They'll review that touchdown upstairs. Jim Blackman and D. Anderson, our replay officials, will take another look at it. Talked about an important response drive for the Texas defense. That's pretty good response right there. Excellent call on the blitz, and this is what they're checking. Did he get the ball across the goal line? Bell trying to drag him down short of the goal line. Wow, I think that's a touch. That was a terrific effort by the big man going airborne at about the two yard line. Re rack it now. Watch. We certainly remember now it has to be conclusive. His arm was down, was the ball across the goal line. Only needs the nose across the line before he's down. I'm not sure there's enough to overturn that. The quarterback wrestling him all the way after throwing his first interception of the season. And that is a big man on a big man. Bell, one of the bigger quarterbacks that you'll see. See, when his hand was down, it was not down. But when the arm, forearm went down, Bell threw the interception because he wasn't able to get enough on the ball. The pressure from Phillips is what created the bad throw. And then you had Whaley dropping into coverage. It was a zone blitz. The blitz got there. The drop defender. For the, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Greg Robinson's defense dials up pressure. And as a result, a zone blitz touchdown for the Longhorns. And there's the big man. He's out there on that extra point team. Got his breath on the sideline. A few slaps on the back, and he goes out there now to help block. Anthony Farah, the transfer from Penn State, tacks on the extra point. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Touchdown underdog, Texas. Takes a 10-3 lead in the Red River rivalry, Todd. Well-designed zone blitz. Here's the safety, Adrian Phillips, that's going to come unblocked. Here's the lineman who normally rushes is going to drop into coverage and get the interception. They still brought pressure, but they fooled Bell both on the blitz and where the defender was, and Texas with a huge defensive play. Finch and Clay back deep for the Sooners. 229 remaining here in the opening quarter. Returnable from the three yard line is Finch. Out to the 26 yard line. You know, Todd. Josh Heifel and Major Applewhite. We talked about the two offensive coordinators. How about this? This is pretty interesting going head to head. Yeah. And they both have such great memories from this game. I thought it was interesting. Major Applewhite said, you know, both teams come down the same tunnel. He said it's that gladiator type feeling walking down the tunnel and onto this feeling. There's nothing quite like it. There are the two. 
upstairs. Major Applewhite, you will remember, was the offensive coordinator at Syracuse when Greg Robinson was the head coach. And then he came back home to work at his alma mater. Clay is back there with Blake Bell. And Clay gets the call, left side, daylight, out to about the 30-yard line on that first down. Right now, it'll be interesting to see how Josh Heupel talks to his new quarterback, Blake Bell. He's played very well. He's had very little adversity. Well, he's had to endure a little adversity here early in this ballgame. Josh Heupel wants to spread the field a little bit this time. Miller goes to the sideline. He'll have three wide out to the right. A lot of short throws, under 10 yards, and then hope those guys can make people miss with their run after the catch ability. Second and seven, they throw that flanker screen out wide. Phillips makes the play over there, and that's the leading receiver, Jalen Saunders. When you watch the Sooners practice, number eight is very, very prominent. Uh, and you can see they spread it now to the left side on this first and ten. Yeah, eight and three. Saunders and Shepard are their two best receivers. They both are good in space with the ball in their hands. Shows the four man front and nothing doing that type of running play. And Reggie Wilson, defensive end, in there with a big play. What's interesting about the, the Longhorns, the senior class, think about this now. They have never, as in ever, beaten Oklahoma. And it is, it is non that these fellas, yeah. they want. They want a scout today. These guys don't want to be known as a senior class that never beat Oklahoma. Damian Williams now is a running back for the Sooners. Play action. Throws underneath to Jackson. He must tackle these wide receivers after short catches. Even in the Tulsa game, when Blake Bell threw for over 400 yards, most of the yardage came after short completions and long runs. So far, Texas has been up to the challenge. One thing we have not seen yet is Blake Bell as a runner on a designed run. Wouldn't be surprised to see one on this third down play. So these six yards, they're going to go over to the side to uh, take a look at it. Meanwhile, let's get an update. Here's Robert Flores. Robert, you're up early. Yeah, Todd, that's a shame what's happened to the running backs in yeah, Georgia. I know. I mean, the good news for them is they've got a couple of freshmen that are pretty good, but they're freshmen, you know, and uh, they hope to get Gurley back soon. Obviously, Marshall is out, but uh, they're going to have to lean on that right arm of Aaron Murray a little bit harder. You know, Todd, at the top of the broadcast, go back on what you said when I asked you the key. You said Texas has to get off to a good start. They've done that. They've absolutely done that on both sides of the ball. Their offensive line has played well. They've had a good run-pass mix. And their defense, which coming into this game, has had a difficult time stopping the run, giving up almost 250 yards a game rushing, has been up to the challenge of stopping Oklahoma. And the more you can put Oklahoma in third down and five, six, seven yards to go, the better off you are. So Greg Robinson has dialed up the Texas defense for this third and six. They're going to challenge the receivers. Right now, they're showing man with a free safety. They're trusting that their rush can get to the quarterback before you find an open receiver. Rush four. It holds and almost picked off again. Beautiful defensive play by Duke Thomas on that ball as we come to the end of the first quarter with that defensive play. Texas's wake-up call was right on time this morning. They are right in this football game, nose-to-nose -nose with Oklahoma and not backing down an inch. The underdog is howling in Dallas, Texas. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local ABC station.
Bob Stoops trails by a touchdown, but take a look at those numbers. Outscoring opponents 57 to nothing in the second quarter, and a year ago wasn't over after the first quarter. It was over at halftime when the Sooners blitzed Mac Brown and the Longhorns in that second quarter. And of course, this game, this game has been a thorn in the side of Mac Brown through the years, especially the last three years. Right now, the officials are taking a break. They're going to go over and uh, get their timing mechanism all set. But I talked about how you really can call this Mac Brown's Waterloo. When, when you think of all of the rumors, the speculation about his future with Texas, take a look at this Red River rivalry, all right? Only four times in Mac Brown's tenure at Texas has he allowed 55 or more points, and all four of those were against Oklahoma and Bob Stoops. And oh, by the way, two of them were the last two years. And a year ago, it was 63 to 21. But, but let me point out right now that the French Army, led by Napoleon Mac Brown, is having a heck of a day. <laughs> we may be rewriting history here today. You well, know? <laughs> they're all, that's why he's smiling right now. Exactly. His team has come to play, and that was what was essential, that they answered the bell early, they've done that, and now they got to finish this half. Yeah, exactly. They've got to really stand up in this half. But I've been very impressed, and i got to tell everybody something. Coming down, he was looking at the iPad, going through play. You said, you know, Brent, I think Texas get pressure on this offensive line. You yeah. said that. Well, I, I do think their front is the best part of this Texas defense, and they've come to play today, and they've done a great job of stopping the run and putting Oklahoma in definite passing situations. And for as well as Blake Bell has played so far this year, this is a little bit newer area, and I think TCU kind of exposed them a little bit last week and stopping them, and Texas is playing to that today. By the way, what was the name of that barbecue place at the Brazos? <laughs> barbecue on the Brazos, man. Oh, <laughs> taste of the town, Todd Blacklist. Oh, yeah. Where have you been, my oh, friend? Uh, you stick with me. I'll, I'll make sure I take care of the food. <laughs> Barbecued quail? Yeah. Mm. That's a new menu item. <laughs> to go with the Texas Trinity of ribs, brisket, and sausage. You did a good job There's on it yesterday. <laughs> with, the, with the pager system. System. We'll use a backup system, and the signals will come from the sideline. So it's fourth and six coming up here for Oklahoma. The punter, of course, is on the field right now. So that's Jet Barnett. Johnson is back deep for the Horns, standing back on his own 20-yard line. Barnett's sort of interesting. He started his college career at Cal, then went to a JC, and uh, finally transferred to Oklahoma. So here he is. You have to be safe and smart here if you're Texas. Probably not a fake, but be alert for it as well. Johnson. Perfectly aimed punt. Beautiful. <laughs> they pinned right him over on the right side, <laughs> and it was that punter pre-planned Barnett. And then the punt team got down as we take a look. Todd at our Pacific Life game summary. Well, so far, again, Brennan Clay had a chance at a touchdown. Would have tied this football game. Jonathan Gray played pretty well. Blake Bell had the interception return for a touchdown. Johnson and Gray both in that backfield. And this is Johnson. You see who came flashing the game. Colvin. Colvin and striker. striker. I'm yeah. going to tell you. They blitzed off the short side of the field. They anticipated run. Well timed blitz. Well called blitz by Mike Stoops. Create a negative play on first down. Yeah, they put McCoy in second and 13. They're going to try to run out of it and nothing much doing on that play with Johnson. Let's check in down below with Heather Cox. Heather? Well, you saw Dominique Alexander in on that tackle and you've seen all the interaction between he and Corey Nelson. I talked to Corey Nelson before the game about the advice he gave to Dominique. He said embrace the moment. Play for your teammates which will allow you to play hard and fast. And an update on Corey as Todd mentioned surgery on Tuesday then five months of rehab and yes they are going to ask the NCAA for that extra year. So we might see him in this game Next year, All right, Heather, as you were saying that, they want to down <laughs> right back on that field. Here comes a draw play, and Gray's got a first down, breaks free with that speed. Midfield. 
Out of bounds at the 40-yard line. A well-executed yep. draw play by the Horns. And they caught Oklahoma anticipating pass. Set up very well. Nice job by Malcolm Brown, the other back in the backfield, number 28. And Gray shows you that ability to make some people miss in space. You know, Todd, when you go back to Texas last game on a Thursday night, it gave them a few extra days to get ready for this game, and it shows. Absolutely. And their third down production has been outstanding so far in the ballgame. It was a 38-yard run right there on that draw play. And they come back with Brown after the block, and he blasts for another first down. And Mike Stoops' defense on its heels right now. This is just a zone play to the left, but you give that back the ability to cut it back. As long as you secure the backside with Jeff Swain, number 82, did, that back can cut it anywhere on that play. Now, first and ten, and they continue with that running play look. Malcolm Brown, the ball carrier, and Ndulue. Chuka in Dulue. <laughs> Worked all night on that one. In Dulue. Made a real good play. The key for Texas so far in this first half is their ability to run the football. They have not been able to run against Oklahoma the last two years. They have taken pressure off Case McCoy, taken pressure off the passing game because they've been able to run right at this Oklahoma defense. Ball the 29 yard line, and here comes Gray right up the middle. The middle of this offensive line yeah. doing one heck of a job here in the first half. Again, Oklahoma playing without their normal starter in the middle, Jordan Phillips, and their best defensive linebacker, Corey Nelson. Third and three, quickly with Temple, but nothing doing. Jammed that time. The Sooners bunched up at the point of attack. Well, that's the second time we've seen Texas try to go for tempo on a third down play and come up short. They tried to throw it to Shipley in their first possession. That time they tried to sneak a quick run in and came up short. They bring a fullback in. Go for De La Torre it. is coming in. They're going to go for it on fourth down and two. Leading 10-3. Davis is out to the right, but they'll show power. Oklahoma stacks that front. Play action, roll right. He had a man wide open and threw incomplete. Delatore, who came in well, he from had the sideline, he was open. He had it, but Stryker, you see the speed of Stryker. Watch Stryker come off the edge. He's so quick getting into the face of McCoy, the case isn't able to get an accurate throw. So, Todd, you, you want to second-guess Mac on this call, or you want me to? I don't mind that call. They had it. I kick a field goal. <laughs> we'll be right back. You're a numbers guy. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome you back to the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, where Texas is upsetting Oklahoma at the moment, Todd. Well, Oklahoma caught a break because Eric Stryker, I think, was not supposed to rush, but cover the fullback coming out on this play. He decided to rush. De La Torre was wide open. Case McCoy just couldn't get him the football. And on the sideline, Bob Stoops had something to say to his linebacker, Stryker. I don't think he did the right thing, but he got away with making a play. Oh, that's great. Striker strikes me as a freelancer. <laughs> Brennan Clay will be the running back. That was the Longhorns' first pass of that drive, George Hill points out to me. Now, Bell, incomplete. That was, of course, intended for Saunders. Let's check in with Robert Flores for an update. Robert. All right. Keep us up to date on that one. Here, Texas beating Oklahoma 10-3. That's Finch going in motion out of the backfield. They're going to slip it over to him. And it was a forward pass, not a lateral, incomplete. They had it, though. You know, they love this play. They put the back in motion and throw a swing. You have two receivers blocking in front. If he catches that, it's just like an outside perimeter run play. It's not really a pass play because he's got blockers in front and another third and long for Oklahoma. And they're only one of four on third downs. Bell looking downfield. Incomplete diving effort by Shepard. He was well covered by the nickel man, Quandre Diggs. 
Texas is playing with great confidence on defense right now. They don't fear the wide receivers. They're playing a lot of bump and run man-to-man -man coverage with a little safety help, and they are right on these guys on any downfield rights. Rouse, I don't think they believe Blake Bell can beat them throwing the football down the field, and, and they're playing coverage that supports that idea. Johnson goes back deep. Jed Barnett, the sooner punter. Johnson is standing just about at the Horns 40-yard line, so they can wind up at excellent field position. But he is an excellent punter. Oh, man. He drove him back to the 25-yard line and kept him inside the hash on that right side. Excellent punting. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. ABC College Football, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Brought to you by AT&T, Rethink Possible, and Pacific Life. For insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. Now, the State Fair of Texas, and look who's back. Good to see you there, Big Tex. <laughs> Who's under the weather for a while, but they got a new one. And uh, Jackie, our stage manager, will take a half dozen of those corn dogs for uh, Todd B and the guys at the booth at halftime. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. So it will be Longhorns football. They lead this one. 10 to 3, keeping the Sooners out of the end zone. Although, if you weren't with us, the Sooners had a touchdown pass that was dropped in the end zone. And, and Case McCoy needs to continue to be smart with the football. If he throws, throw on time and don't take any unnecessary risk. He's not turned it over since he's been the starter. He's got to keep that up right here. Here's Gray. He's Gray picks good. his daylight well. I, I tell you what. He's been averaging 103 yards a game over the last four games. And, and Major Applewhite said when we first got him, we knew he was great in high school. But when he first got here, he didn't show the physicality or the ability to make people miss in practice and in early games as much as we thought. But he gets better and better. Every time he carries the football now, he gets better and better. He is playing really well. And right back to him. Second effort. Close to the first down. Here comes third down, and Todd on third downs here today. The Longhorns are six of eight. Yep, and mostly because they haven't had long yardage situations. They've been in very manageable situations. As long as you have the ability to either run or pass on third down, you have the edge over the defense, even a defense as good as Oklahoma. Delatore comes back in as the fullback, and Malcolm Brown on this third and one. Power eye. Here's Malcolm for the first down. See, I think Oklahoma doesn't really have an answer for the power inside running of Texas in the ballgame so far. They're missing a couple key guys. They're playing a style of defense with smaller, faster bodies, so they're much faster on the perimeter, but right in the gut of their defense, they're getting gashed a little bit by Texas in the first half. What you sacrifice with speed on the field is bulk and size, particularly at linebacker. Now McCoy backs off into that pistol look. Play action is going to go deep down that right sideline. The overthrew man and out of bounds. Great His target that Coleman. time was Shipley, and Aaron Colvin was right there. You're not going to you're not going to fool Aaron Colvin. Texas likes to do a lot of double moves. They tried to do a little stop and go, and Aaron Colvin. One of the real leaders of this defense and really one of the best pure cover corners in all of college football. Gray and Brown in this backfield set for Major Applewhite. Sears rush four. Which second effort run that time. Gray crosses the 45-yard line, but that brings up another third down. Yep. This is a little bit third and longer now. A little tougher, but still manageable. The offensive line has done a good job protecting Case McCoy so far today. Let's see if Mike Stoops calls for a little pressure here. I like 
like what they've done formation-wise. Oklahoma better get a Kyle timeout. They don't have anybody guarding the slot right now. There it is. They were really mixed up because Texas put a formation with a running back out wide to draw coverage from Colvin, and nobody was guarding the slot. And the Stoops brothers having a little chat about that <laughs> over there on the sideline. But the boss has the last word. We've got a time. Affleck, I don't have Herb Street. Affleck. But I've got Blackledge, and he's going to nail you. <laughs> Who were the starting quarterbacks the last time that Texas defeated Oklahoma? Think about that a little bit. The last time that Texas defeated Oklahoma. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, well, we think about it. We'll give time. So I know it was Colt McCoy, 2009, right? Jonathan Gray. I told you, Affleck, he'd be all over you, man. <laughs> Jonathan Gray's into that backfield. Alongside McCoy, of course, the younger brother. A lot of movement from Oklahoma trying to confuse the pass protection of Texas. And Left tackle may have yep. pulled back a little bit too early on that. Might have broke the snap count. See, the reason this is effective is when you stand everybody Best up. Time. Number 51, offense, five-yard penalty, third down. When you stand everybody up and move around, the line has trouble identifying. There's the early movement by the left tackle. But ideally, you want your offensive line and your center particularly to say, okay, we're going to block these four big guys, and this is the middle linebacker we're identifying. When you move around and stand up and shift, it's hard to make those identification calls. Third and 12. Comes a blitz. Doesn't get there. Far side. Caught on the run. A beautiful throw against the blitz for a touchdown. And Marcus Johnson takes it to the house. 59 yards for the underdog. Todd, that came on third and 11. Yep. Case McCoy knows he was going to get hit because there was a free guy coming, but he also knew because of the blitz, he had single coverage on a wheel route by Marcus Johnson, and he threw a perfect pass. And Ferrer attacks on the extra point. Here's Marcus Johnson. He's going to run a wheel route and up the sideline. The outside receiver's coming in, so it's one-on-one -on -one out there. And Case McCoy knows all he has to do is hang onto the ball long enough to let his man clear the route. And then he throws a beautiful pass over the outside shoulder for the touchdown. See, instead of picking on Colvin, you go on the nickelback, Kaz Everett. Your chances increase and you get a touchdown on the back end. Case McCoy with a terrific strike off that blitz. Look at him catch the ball in stride. And Johnson just takes it in. And here is Case McCoy's reaction. And here is the quote from Young McCoy. On today's game, I could be remembered for the rest of my life. We've got to beat them. That's something you're known for when you come here. That was on Monday, yeah. folks. And if this holds up, they're going to remember that scoring strike for a long time. See, his brother was 3-1 and one in this game. A four-year starter, he won three of them. Gase wants to get into that family uh, bragging rights a little bit, too. A check-in now with Robert Flores for an update. Robert? Brent, back to you. All right. A lot of things start to break on this Saturday, and it's going to be a great day of college football all day long. Troy by two touchdowns. The heat is on Blake Bell. You still have to tackle well if you're Texas' defense. That's what they've done a beautiful job of here in the first half. They look better on defense in the first half of this game than they've looked at any point this season. Thank you, Greg Robinson. All right, time's up on the athlete. I had Cole you got McCoy, Kate. You got but Cole. I, don't, I don't remember the other one. Okay, here it is now. This is sort of interesting. 
Sam Bradford started that game, re-injured his shoulder, replaced by Landry Jones. Wow. But it was Sam who started the game. Okay. But you got cold right away. You were all over that. Yeah, I knew that one. So Herb Street's 50% wrong. Second down in seven, everybody, at age 17. Side nailed. Another example of that great tackling that you're talking about. That was bind him. They're gonna throw under and hope you miss one tackle. Because they got quick guys that can make yards after the catch, but not if you tackle like that. Third down and three. And the Texas fans have climbed into this one. They were so quiet when this game began. They weren't even all in the stadium exactly. when it all began. They came late. Timeout has been called. If either team looks time. rattled in this game, it's Oklahoma. You know, if anybody you expected to be a little bit rattled, it would be Texas. Oklahoma looks a little more unsure of what they're doing right now than Texas does. Yeah, good start will do that for you. Yep. That'll change the pressure factor, won't it, folks? Timeout. Todd Blackledge, I know what you dial up here. Absolutely. I mean, this has been an Achilles heel for the Texas defense all season. Their ability to stop quarterback runs, whether they're by design or scramble when things break down. Blake Bell is a big physical runner. He has not carried it yet in the ball game today. That's what I expect to see right here on this third down play. Third and three. Four wideouts for OU. Texas trying to stack the front, though, and OU may have switched here. Now they pull the backers out. And he's going to look to throw it. They'll try to keep him contained. And it is complete at the 47, and there's a penalty flag thrown in the backfield. In the area where you expect holding as the quarterback left the pocket. At Darrell Williams. It's a nice job by Blake Bell extending the play. Darrell Williams not quite sure where his quarterback was. He's the right tackle, number 79. He's okay right there, but then when Blake Bell leaves the pocket, he just instinctively reaches up and grabs his man and draws the flag. So now it is third and 13. Reached the 35 yard line for a first down. Receivers are covered, tries to take off, and he is sacked. Jackson Jeffcoat, son of an NFL legend, makes the tackle. When you trust your front four to rush and not have to bring extra guys to blitz, then you can play great coverage. So you rush four and drop seven into coverage. Lake Bell had time, just nobody open. And then they get the, the coverage sack because Blake Bell can't go anywhere with the football. Johnson is back deep. And Jed Barnett has been an outstanding punter for Oklahoma here the last couple of times. I'll hit this one at about the eight-yard line. Ty Johnson got a return. Slips, breaks a couple of tackles, and makes his way to the 46-yard line. A reminder that tonight now on ABC, the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup heats up under the lights in Charlotte. Don't miss the Bank of America 500 at Charlotte tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern on ABC. Jimmy Johnson closing in on Matt Kenseth. What a duel that's going to be. Well, you don't want to miss it tonight if you're a NASCAR fan. First down and 10 coming up here for the Horns. Jonathan Gray is the running back. They lead by two touchdowns. Two tight ends set for Texas. Again, they've had great success running inside against this Oklahoma defense. Come out in a run set right away on this possession. And they do run right at him with Gray. He's at midfield. Right now, I think if you're Mac Brown and Major Applewhite, 
you want to take as much time off the clock on this drive as you can. If you get more points, great. You've got field position. Eat clock. Get to the locker room with a 14-point lead at least and put the pressure even more squarely on Blake Bell's shoulders to start the third quarter. Second and seven. McCoy moves up under center. Play action. Drops back. Goes back down that far sideline. Incomplete. Actually, he was trying to get Davis more on that right hash. Well, he had him. You know, I, I think this is on Colt McCoy. He knows he missed him. With no free safety in the middle, you don't throw that ball up the hash. You throw it away from the defender and let your guy run to the football. That time, he threw that over the wrong shoulder, and he didn't have, didn't have to. And as a result, the Horns face a third and seven. Like I said, Colt McCoy, he probably was upset too, but that was Casey who threw it. Johnson and Malcolm Brown in the backfield. Timeout called by McCoy. The Horns burn one here on this third and seven at 525. Let's check in with Robert Flores for an update. Robert? <laughs> no, I'm telling you, after that stop for the barbecue, yeah, no I don't fry. know that he's touched anything. He's been full for a couple of days, but he did clean his plate yeah. uh, yesterday. And I do, I do anticipate <laughs> one or more corn dogs at halftime. But beyond that, no. Say, uh, Heather, did you try some of that fried butter? I know they don't have that out in Boise. I'm ashamed to admit I tried uh -huh. the fried PB&J, and it was spectacular. But meanwhile, <laughs> let's change subjects to the heat down here. <laughs> Texas defense without their starting defensive tackle, Chris Whaley. He got the pick six earlier, and it wore him out. He's being attended to for illness and overheating. Very much a, a warm, hot, humid. He's had ice towels on the head. They're forcing fluids. They continue to evaluate him. Meanwhile, Desmond Jackson will be in in his place. You burned me, Brent. <laughs> Third down at seven, Heather. <laughs> and pay attention at striker. Number 19, he's coming on the rush. Here he is right here. Best pass rusher out there for Oklahoma. They don't get there, and it's complete for the first down. Shipley. You put the receivers in a little bunch stack set. It's hard to match up man for man in that. And he gets Shipley work in the middle of the field. A tight stack formation, Shipley in the middle. That's where he's most comfortable, working the middle of the defense on option and crossing routes. And Todd uh, McCoy, 9 to 13 for 125 yards in that one beautiful touchdown strike to Johnson. Good gray, it's stacked up on the right. Reverses the field and down he goes with Hayes hanging on the strong safety. Not sure what Jonathan Gray was doing on that play. I mean, at first it looked like he was going to stop and pitch it back like a flea flicker because he almost completely stopped and then he changed directions. Looked very hesitant on that run. The very first time he's looked that way the entire game. Second down at 11, 420. Here's Gray. Didn't look hesitant there. Boy, he hit that hole, didn't he? And pounded it down to about the 32-yard line. Running great with, with really nice pad level. Keeping those pads low. Running with leverage. They're inside running. Again, against a new nose guard, Jordan Wade's a redshirt freshman, number 93 in there. Young new linebacker in Dominique Alexander, who's in there for Corey Nelson. And that's what set the whole table for Texas offensively, their ability to run inside against Oklahoma. They see another one of those third downs here as we move toward the 330 mark in the first half. McCoy, got a man wide open. Incomplete, he had Kendall Sanders for a touchdown. What did I tell you about when you have a guy wide open? They went double move. They got Colvin to bite. He's open. Throw it right at him. Don't worry about leading it in that position. If you have a wide receiver wide open, throw that ball right at his numbers and let him make the sure catch. So it'll be fourth down and five. And here comes the long Anthony Farah 50-yard field goal attempt. 
A miss here would give the Sooners pretty good field position. Farah, though, with a strong leg. On its way. Looks good, and it is. A 50 yard field goal. Makes it 20 to 3, Longhorns. You know, when Anthony Farah transferred from Penn State last year, he got to Texas injured. He had a leg injury. He never really developed last year. This year, he's healthy, and he's had an outstanding start to the season. Mac Brown and the Longhorns shocking the college football world here today. If you go back now, 2010, Oklahoma won it 28 to 20. Then at 11, it was a rout, 55-17. Last year, 63 to 21. And guess what? Todd Blackledge has talked about number 10, Blake Bell. Hasn't rushed. He scored four rushing touchdowns in that win last yeah. year. Well, one was from eight yards out. The other three were one-yard runs. That was what he did. That was his role last year. I'm still surprised that we have not seen one quarterback designed run in the first half yet for Oklahoma, though. Finch and Clay back deep for Stoops. At the goal line, Finch again. Right on the left hash. Looking for daylight. Breaks free. Going to be in a foot race. the 27-yard line, the line judge says, but he gives the Sooners a huge lift with that 73-yard return. Bryson Eccles saved the touchdown with a great hustle play, but this was what Oklahoma needed. They struggled on offense. They turned to their special teams to make a play. Coming into the game, Texas was last in the Big 12 in kickoff coverage. They kick most of them out of the end zone to start the game. That one, they give up the big return. Ford's back in the game now. The power runner, the young freshman they're really high on. Millard with his first carry. Speaking of power runners, and he's short of the 20-yard line. Santos with the stop. And yep. now can the Sooners finish? Yeah, and I'm going to say it again. If, if I don't see Blake Bell on a designed run, a zone read, some kind of quarterback power run on this possession, I'm going to be really surprised. They're in the red zone or close to the red zone. He's a six foot five, six foot six, 250-pound running back who is hard to tackle from going forward. Keeps forward. Right behind him. Checks that sideline. Josh Heidelman is calling the plays. Got a glimpse. The Horns defense. Here comes Ford. Cole on the right side. First down. And now they are in that red zone with Phillips making the stop. And that youngster running with authority. Coach has told us I'm a practice. Yep. We've got to get him some reps. Well, he, he's a power guy. You know, the other guys, Clay and Williams, not quite as big. Both, all three of them with great speed. And Ford in there in a critical part of the game right now. The fullbacks are in with the freshman tailback. And they do show that Bill goes with power. Then they run Millard again. Freshman out front with a block. Millard to the 10 yard line on that first down. Edmund with the stop. You know, it's interesting. In the Notre Dame game, a big win. Notre Dame started to close the gap in the first half, and late in the first half, they threw their third interception of the ball game. Oklahoma responded with a touchdown right before half to make it 21 to 7. Damian Williams reports in. He's the running back. Second down in five. Right at the Horns, 10 yard line. Millard first and goal to the two, crushing them with number 33. Folks, those of you who follow the NFL and like to watch college football and wonder about it, you just pencil this guy down in the yeah. third round and he's going to play. He's going to play well. And they go right now with tempo and they walk in for the touchdown. Damian Williams. 
I'll tell you the guy who didn't get much credit on that drive because we didn't call his name, but Aaron Rimkowski, number 48, a key blocker that whole possession. The other fullback leading the way for Millard, and that time leading the way for Damian Williams in the touchdown. So Texas started off the game with an impressive power running game, but now it is the Sooners who have answered with yep. their own power running game. Great field position after the kickoff return and a nice response. So there is the extra point. Tacked on by Honeycutt. 73 yard kickoff return set it all up. Texas had tackled well in the first half. Three missed tackles on this kickoff return. Finch makes them pay for it and sets up his offense with a short field. They've had struggle moving the football consistently, but with the short field, they go power running. Millard for a couple carries and then Damian Williams with the touchdown. So a good response with the short field by the power running of Oklahoma. A little over a minute left here in the first half. And these folks here at the Cotton Bowl, they're getting their money's worth today in yeah. this one. And you go back to the pass that Case McCoy missed. You know, he had his guy open. It would have been a touchdown instead of a field goal. As it is, they're still looking to go into the locker room with the lead. Of course, Blake Bell had one like that. It could have been a touchdown that was dropped by Brendan Clay. A couple near misses for both quarterbacks in the first half. And a reminder, stay tuned now for the Cooper Tires halftime report. We'll have scores for the games that have started. Missouri. Everybody wondering how good are the Tigers. And they're showing it today down in Athens, Georgia. You'll see those highlights at halftime. On a bounce to the five-yard line, Sanders. Coming around now, another good strong return. Not as good as Finch's. I liked it, though. It was a reverse. I mean, a pretty gutsy call with a minute left in the half. They went for a reverse on the kickoff return and almost popped it out. Yeah, Colbert is the young man who wound up with the football. And, of course, two great games later today. Michigan takes on Todd's alma mater, Penn State. Big Ten battle. Then at 8.30 on College Football Primetime, presented by Hampton Hotels, Johnny Manziel and Texas A&M take on Ole Miss. Ole Miss has lost two in a row to Alabama and Auburn. I give them a chance in that game tonight. Their defense is a lot better than people might think. Just ask Texas. Yeah. Malcolm Brown. Cuts it off. And he is brought down to 36 by Gabe Lynn, the free safety from Tulsa, Oklahoma. It's great to see all the fans. When, when we were coming down, you yeah. see all, it's, it's all those awesome. Sooner flags. And, of course, coming up from Austin, you got the Longhorn flags. And it's, it's one of the great settings, folks, in, in college football. Here's Malcolm Brown. Got the first down, and then some almost midfield. Now, Dominic Alexander tackles it. Because they got that first down, they may take a shot here now, because now they're right at midfield. 27 seconds. They still have one timeout. Clock stops while they move the chains. Now they might get a little more aggressive. They got four wide, and that's exactly what they're looking for, Todd. McCoy, deep middle, caught Shipley. Shipley is upended short of the 30-yard yep. line. Stops the clock for the first down. Did not get out of bounds. So they're going to line up again. Try to get set, get their play called before they mark the ball ready for play. After the 18-yard gain right here, here they come now with a first and 10. You're looking at maybe one more completion here with 13 seconds to try to set yourself up for another field goal. You know, I don't know if Oklahoma relaxed on those first couple plays thinking that Texas was just going to kind of pack it in and go to the locker room, but here Texas is in scoring position. You got 13 seconds. They've already hit a 50-yarder. You keep it on the ground, and Brown breaks close. And there's your... Now they'll use their timeout and kick as the last play of the half. Texas started the game ready to play. They're finishing the first half ready to play. I mean, that, that was the big question coming in. Would they stay in the game in the first half? They've more than done that. And for all the criticism that's been heaped upon Mac Brown, some of it justified, he deserves credit. Absolutely. For this week and this performance right here. 
He did a terrific performance. And it's only the first half. That's There's right. That's a lot right. of time left. But can you imagine the difference with this Longhorn team running up that tunnel to the locker room at halftime today compared to the last two years? Huge, huge difference. He doesn't have to give a pep talk at halftime to get him to go back out and play the second half. Napoleon's having a good first half <laughs> here at Waterloo. <laughs> so here's Farron now. This is a 43-yarder from the right half. Close to it. On its way. Looks good again. So he backs up that 50-yarder with a 43-yarder, and it's 23-10 at the half. Two-touchdown underdog. When's the last time we ever saw the Horns that big an underdog against Oklahoma? The Stoops brothers will regroup here at halftime. Oklahoma can get the ball to start the second half. Let's check in now with Heather and Mac Brown. Brent, thanks so much. Coach, you told me a quick start critical to success today. How did you create that early momentum? Well, guys are excited about the game, Heather. We sure played a better second quarter than we have the last, last two years, for sure. But got a lot of football left. They'll use a great team, a lot of pride. Uh, our guys have to keep playing, have to keep playing. We're running the ball, we're staying balanced, hit a few deep shots, kicking game's been good. So uh, the disappointing on the kickoff return, they did a great job there, which gave them their seven points. Well, you talk about that kickoff return as you head to the locker room. What is your message to your team about not letting up in the second half? Keep playing. We said it'd be 60 minutes. Uh, we said it's uh, two Mack trucks running into each other for 60 minutes. We just had 30 of that. We got 30 more uh, exciting football left. Right, Mac, go cool off in that locker room. Thanks, Coach. All right, Heather, and Mack will certainly take that first half performance by his Longhorns. They responded. Come to the end of the first half here at the Cotton Bowl, so stay tuned after these messages with the Cooper Tires Halftime Report. Welcome, everyone, to the Cooper Tires Halftime Report. Texas, well, a lot of people are disappointed in the way they play the last few years. Not today. Chris Whaley with the interception here. Part of the reason Texas has a 23-10 lead at halftime over Oklahoma. John Saunders alongside of Jesse Palmer. And this is a Texas team that, as I mentioned, people have just thought, where have they been? Should Mac Brown even stick around? They look so much different today against Completely Oklahoma. different looking Texas team than we've seen all year, John. Physical on offense. The most physical they've been running the football. It's set up manageable third downs for Case McCoy to take advantage of. He's been lights out throwing on those crucial down and distances so far in this game. And Texas's defense has been vilified all season long, rightfully so, but today making plays finally. And they look schematically different to me than they did against Ole Miss when Greg Robinson took over as defensive coordinator. Not so vanilla. We're seeing some exotic pressures. We saw that on the pick six by Chris Whaley. This team understands what's at stake, both on the field and off the field in this game. In the second half, it's easy for Texas. You have to run the football, and you have to continue stopping the run. When you have all that fried food all over the place, anything can happen in college football. In 2010, Oklahoma's ranked number three in the nation. They faced the Missouri squad, and Missouri came up with the upset, looking to do the same to Georgia today. First quarter, down seven, second and goal. James Franklin tucks it in and takes off. After an injury plague season last year, James Franklin's been lights out so far this season. And then Franklin this time finds LaDamian Washington 16 yards and is 14-7. Missouri has a lot of big receivers that can run. LaDamian Washington, six foot four, and he's got wheels. A 14-10 game, and Franklin, a little option here, hands it off to Marcus Murphy, who breaks tackles. Young, inexperienced defense from Georgia has missed a lot of tackles this season that showed up so far in this game on a play action here Aaron Murray gets sacked by Shane Ray the ball pops loose and Michael Sam picks it up and goes 21 for a touchdown. Georgia playing without its two best running backs, three of its top four wide receivers, and that young and experienced defense having issues right now. Missouri in total control, playing between the hedges. As you mentioned, Georgia with so many injuries, you had to wonder how long before it took its toll. Almost lost to Tennessee a week ago. Arkansas facing South Carolina. Jadavian Clowney, all that controversy, he just laughs it off. Alex Collins takes a handoff. Nice lane, six-yard touchdown. 
touchdown. And no laughing matter when you watch this young freshman from Arkansas run. He's been special this year. Connor Shaw, a little dinged up, finds Bruce Ellington crossing route right in the corner of the end zone. Lots of athletes on the South Carolina offense. Bruce Ellington's this point guard starter the last three years in the basketball team. Texas Tech against Iowa State, already 7-0. Jarvis West sees a great lane. A little move to his right, and then the speed to burst through. He's 5'7", he's 174 pounds, starting slot receiver. You see the wheels, you see the open field cutting ability. This is a big play on special teams early for the Cyclones. It's a 14-14 game. Kenny Williams over the top to break it, but it's tied again. 21 apiece. The Baylor Bears, their offense has just been incredible this year, Jesse, by the numbers. First number 70, they've scored at least 73 straight games. No FBS school has done that since LSU back in 1930. The next number is 14. 14 touchdown drives of a minute or less this year, the most in the FBS. 27 other schools have fewer total touchdowns in 2013. And the final number, and this is the one you might want to sit down for, 781 and a half. That's how many total yards Baylor has averaged per game this year, most in the FBS, 150 more yards than the single season record. And you take a look at the rest of their schedule, you say, can they break that record? Well, when they're already 150 yards ahead of the pace, no ranked opponents until November the 7th against Oklahoma. So a lot of people haven't had a chance to see yeah. this Baylor offense. What makes it go? The speed on offense. As a team, they're good enough to win the Big 12. They haven't played the 85 Bears yet on defense, no. but it's the speed that makes them special. You look at Lake Seastrunk at running back, Tevin Reese, Antoine Goodley at wide receiver. There are sub 4 5 40 guys all over the field. They got a quarterback in Bryce Petty, fifth year in the system. He can run and throw it as well. I'm not yet willing to say the defense is good, but they're improved from a year ago. We'll find out November 7th in that brutal five game stretch to end the season, starting against Oklahoma, just how good Baylor is. But because of that, offense I think they're for real Baylor Oregon how about that mm. <laughs> for for a match time do you have not enough footballs on the field when we come back we're gonna take a look at the Clemson Tigers is this their year to bust out of the ACC and play for a national championship vote.com to cast your vote welcome back to the Cooper tires halftime report we assume you'll be with us at 3.30 Eastern time for the second half of the doubleheader. If you're in the gold area, you'll see that game out of the Big Ten and the rest of you in the ACC. Of course, if you're in the red, it's on ESPN2 as Boston College goes against Clemson. And Boston College will have to try and find a way to slow down Taj Boyd because this offense has looked terrific. This it's year. the most efficient this offense has looked since Chad Morris took over as the offensive play caller. And it's because of the play of quarterback Taj Boyd. Third year in the system, he's so comfortable and he makes great decisions. And that's key because this offense thrives on explosive plays. They read defenders in all three levels of the field and it sets up advantages with respect to numbers. And they like to use a lot of run pass options. Here's some examples against Georgia. Taj Boyd's going to key the safety. Now they got six blockers up front. They want to run against the six man box. That's a good formula. They'll go ahead and do that unless the safety inserts. If that's the case, the pass option is Sammy Watkins running behind the safety in the one on one matchup. So on the play, Taj Boyd gets the snap, reads the mesh point with the running back, sees the safety insert. There's the throw to Watkins. He runs over a corner. One of the most explosive players in the country off to the races for a score. Later in the game, now reading in the second level on a linebacker. You got five blockers on offense this time. Right now, there's six in the box. You can't run against that. So the pass option is throwing the swing route to the running back. Unless the linebacker removes himself to cover the swing route, now you've got five on five. That's a good formula to run. And they've got playmakers all over the field, including Rod McDowell at running back, a guy that can make people miss. Circle button right here. Our button right here gets outside, takes it down the sidelines. There are explosive players all over the field. Now, up to this point this season, Clemson looks like a legit national championship contender. Impressive win week one against Georgia. With the exception of the first half against NC State, they've been dominant. Today's game against Boston College cannot be a trap game looking ahead to Florida State. Remember, in recent history, Clemson's lost some games that they went into expected to win. They have to play well in all three phases. Boston College a good team. They had Florida State down 17-3. to They've got to be dominant again today to set up that massive showdown next week at home against Florida State, a game that has ACC implications, 
and national championship. But Dabble Sweeney's looking and he's saying, you know what, Jesse, thanks very much for bringing up Florida State because mm. that's what his players are no doubt <laughs> thinking about. You can't help it. They're human beings. They've got to be looking down the road. Virginia Tech and Pittsburgh. Yes, Pitt in the ACC. Third and nine, Logan Thomas hit as he throws. Calvin Klein hauls it in. He really struggled last year. Different quarterback in the last two games. Logan Thomas and Virginia Tech, they're for real. More to come on ABC in a moment. to the Big Ten, Indiana and Michigan State. Michigan State top-ranked rush defense in the nation. Tevin Coleman finds a hole here and goes up the middle 64 yards. It's an explosive Indiana offense, though. They put up 486 yards against Penn State last week in that big one. They can score a lot of different ways. Tied at seven, Connor Cook looking for Benny Fowler, 34 yards. It's nice as a quarterback. Let your big physical wide receivers make plays after the catch. Accurate throw and a great job getting north-south by Fowler. Nebraska and Purdue. Taylor Martinez missing his third straight game because of turf toe. Nebraska leading 14-0. Amir Abdullah takes a handoff and goes outside. And Amir Abdullah really step up here in these last couple of weeks without Taylor Martinez. Nice job with the vision. Joel Stave for Wisconsin as they get prepared to take on Northwestern. Northwestern, of course, coming off a disappointing loss to Ohio State. It's a disappointing loss, but they should still have a lot of confidence going into this game against Wisconsin. I thought they played very well. Simeon threw the football very, very well. Venrick Mark ran well, made plays catching the football. Defense forced three turnovers. They're playing a Wisconsin team coming off a bye that they've used to get healthy. We also saw Alabama in action on ESPN2. Marcus Johnson hauls this one in from McCoy. Boy, and it's 23-10. Second half after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Expect more. Welcome back to ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. And at the half, the Texas Longhorns shocking the favorite Oklahoma Sooners 23 to 10. And with Todd Blackledge, I'm Brett Musburger. And Todd, you've had a chance now to digest numbers and yeah. things for the first half. What really impressed you about Texas? The way their defense played. They, they stopped the Oklahoma run. I didn't know that they could do that. They had a 24-yard run on the first play. The game reversed. The rest of the half, only 49 yards. And the other thing they did, which they had to do, was tackle well against these wide receivers in space. Oklahoma throws a lot of balls that are short inside of 10 yards, and you must tackle well to limit the gains after the catch. This is what TCU did to Oklahoma last week, and in the first half, Texas did the same thing. Did a great job of tackling these little wide receivers in space and limiting the game. Coming into the game, Blake Bell had not thrown the ball down the field much, but he got a lot of yards after the catch. Averaging 138 yards a game today, only 19. So the, the Texas defense did a great job stopping the run and tackling in, out on the perimeter. Oklahoma will handle the ball to start the second half here. Now, I'm curious to see what Oklahoma counters with here in the second half. We still haven't seen Blake Bell run the football. He had 14 carries last week, 40 for the season. Do we even see Trevor Knight for a possession or two as a running threat to try to shake things up a little bit for the Sooner offense? Nick Rose will kick it away for the Longhorns. Ball rolled off the tee here to start the proceedings. Finch had an explosive kickoff return, which led to an Oklahoma touchdown. So let's see what the Horns do here against that return team. Into the end zone, touchback back on the 25 and our Pacific Life game summary. And Todd, let's compare the first half a year ago yeah. with the first half today. Well, there is no comparison. I mean, you look what Texas has done, 304 yards of offense compared to last year, 65. They controlled the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. That's been the difference in the game, and they took care of the football. The turnover for Oklahoma, the interception by Blake Bell results in a touchdown. So uh, outside of the one mistake on the special teams, it was a near flawless first half for Texas. Brennan Clay will open as the running back alongside Blake Bell. Bell number 10. 
show the jet sweep and they hand it off to Sanders. And let's check it down below with Heather. Brent, believe it or not, Bob Stoops was remarkably calm coming out of the locker room. He knows that there's a lot of football left to be played. The big point of emphasis for him, third down. He said, we've got to be much better on the third down defensively, offensively as well. Third down execution critical, especially the run game. He said, if we can run in this second half like we did in the end of that second quarter, we'll be in good shape. And Heather, speaking to that point, Keith Ford, the freshman from Cypress, Texas, went to the Cypress Ranch High School. He's back on the field for him. And on third downs, Oklahoma was only one of six in that first half offensively against the Hornets. And here is the youngster. No need for a third down on this set of downs as he bolts to the 41-yard line. Phillips, the safety, forced to make the slap. And guess who the key blocker is? Trey Miller. Number 33 lined up as a fullback that time and led the way for the freshman. Miller does a lot of things. Plays on the end as a tight end, plays in the backfield, catches the ball really well. Still think he'll be a big factor in this game for Oklahoma if they find a way to win. Senior from Columbia, Missouri. And they are going to open this half and see if they can get that power running game going. Yeah, they have to. I mean, coming into the game, that's been their bread and butter. 246 yards a game on the ground. They ran for over 300 yards in two ball games this year, but they just didn't have much success running it in the first half. And a credit to Bob Stoops and Josh Heupel, you don't abandon it at that point. You just say, hey, we just got to block better. Aaron Rapkowski, number 48, from Dayton, Texas, is the other fullback the two fullbacks are flanking the quarterback play action Ford over the middle to Millard excellent receiver 30 showing you his versatility and all the things he can do see the first two plays he blocks now this time they release him Edmund thought he was coming to get blocked by Millard and Millard ran right by him for the play action pass he's so versatile and so dangerous from the 27 here comes Ford Gang tackled, ball fumbled, but out of bounds. So it will be second down. Now Oklahoma's doing to Texas in this opening possession what Texas did in the first half. A lot of big set formations with extra blockers in and just challenging the physicality of the Texas defense. Running right at him right now. Damian Williams checks in for this second down. the 25 yard line Williams picks up no more than a yard yard and a half Edmund with the stop and here is that third down bugaboo that Heather reported that Bob Stoops was concerned about oh, here we go third and seven well, TCU did a great job defending Oklahoma last week on third down held them to three of 13 conversions Texas has taken a page out of that playbook they've guarded closely and they've tackled in the perimeter Four receivers, stack three on the left. Horns rush four. Takes off. Not going to get the first down. But it is fourth and short. Need a couple of yards for the first down. And Stoop sends the kicking team onto the field. Last week, the Iowa State quarterback did this on third down three times. Scrambled for first downs. Texas gives up a crease, but they close the door quickly and stop Bell short of the first down. Now Michael Honeycutt from Richardson, Texas with a 37-yarder. And it is a 10-point game. 23-13, Texas with the lead after the Honeycutt field goal. This telecast available in high definition. Brought to you by Vizio, Cotton Bowl, Dallas, Texas. There you see the coach's trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. That'll be awarded to the winner of the Vizio BCS National Championship on January 6th in Pasadena. Nice to see Bill Hancock here. He's the head of the BCS. And of course, next year it'll be the Final Four of football. 
that Bill will introduce. They're calling it the college football playoff. And if I read that uh, email correctly, there's no S on it. Oh. College football playoff. So of course, we'll get memos every time we say. We playoff. should get Jim Moore to do uh, some of the programs. Playoff. 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 That's awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> One of the best sound bites of all time. Johnson and Bergeron. Back deep. And this will come out of the 25 yard line. Well, one of the things Texas did great in the first half was convert on third down. Nine for 12, and they mixed the run and the pass. The offensive line kept it in manageable situations, and that was one of the biggest differences in the first half. Their efficiency on third down, and again, going against an Oklahoma defense coming into the game that was 10th in the nation in defending you on third down at 27% conversion. So that first half, third down, Texas did a great job. Jonathan Gray will open the second half as the running back. H. Rappelwhite used Johnson, Bergeron, Malcolm Brown, Gray. He used four Longhorns in that backfield in the first half. And here is Gray. Three seals up fast. Jordan Wade, backup nose man from Round Rock, Texas, made the stop for the Sooners. I just have a feeling that Mike and Bob Stoops spent some considerable time talking to their defensive linemen in, in the locker room and saying, you guys have to step up. We can't get beat on the inside run in this half the way we did in the first half. You guys have to get off blocks and plug some holes. Second and nine, and they come with Johnson on a running play again. You can see right away on two plays that they're plugging the holes. The report when we were up at practice was that maybe the weakest part of their defense is that front line, but they had a lot of talent that was very young. They've got a lot of young talent. But, uh, and again, the, the, the fact that they're playing with three true defensive linemen instead of four puts even more pressure on those big guys. Third down at eight. Shipley goes in motion over to the left side of the formation. Overload look to the right of Case McCoy. Trying to get to him. And they force a bad pass, but there's a penalty flag. Hang on. See, if they bring four from one side, you've got to get rid of the football. You can only block three. And Case McCoy knew he had to get rid of the football, and he did. Let's see what the penalty is. Sanders, I believe, was the wide receiver down there. Pass interference, number 14 defense. Spot foul, first down. Watch Colvin on this, Todd. Well, this is a break for Texas. Colvin gets the penalty. Could have got it right there. I don't know if that's where they called it or if they called it at the end. But there was no way Case McCoy was going to complete this pass. He was throwing it away. Well, that was a face pass. Play. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. First down and 10. Three wide to the left for Horns. I remember it came on a third down. Pump fake left. And wow, has to throw that ball away. There was pressure. Well, they were trying coming to set up the Shannon. They were trying to set a screen. Yeah, trying to set the screen for Jonathan Gray. And Case McCoy did the right thing of throwing it away. But you want to throw this at the feet of your guy, not at the feet of a defender. <laughs> Chuka was right there. Second down and 10. Johnson and Brown are the running backs. That's Brown motioning out. So Johnson and he is thrown for loss by Stryker. Eric Stryker from Sefner, Florida. And if you've never heard of Sefner, Florida, it's in the Tampa, Florida area. Well, he just ran right by the tackle. Kennedy Estelle, number 77, never even got out of his stance before Stryker was by him forced the play back inside and also got the tackle. Another third down and this third and 13. And again, this is where Case McCoy has to be smart with the ball. He's protected it all game. If it's there, take a shot. If it's not, there's nothing wrong with punting the football. Comes the blitz from the linebacker. Stryker's got him again. But Gray, and there is a penalty flag, I think, on that far side as they battle to get back to the line of scrimmage. I thought I saw a yellow flag fly, but I guess not. 
But at any rate, this was Stryker all over McCoy, Todd. You got to get help on Stryker. You can't ask your tackle to block him one-on-one. -on -one. You better get a back to chip, or you better get a tight end to line up and make him come from further away. He's too fast for an offensive tackle. Saunders back deep for Oklahoma on this punt. to go out of bounds at his decent field position for Oklahoma. Bebo has been on his feet all day in this muggy afternoon, rallying behind his long arms. ABC College Football, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings, brought to you by Cadillac, Aflac, official partner of the Heisman Trophy, and the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. The capital of fried food. How'd you like the corny dog at halftime? Love corny dog. Love it. So much I had to have two. Mm -hmm. Well, we take a look now at the Oklahoma Sooners. This is their last sixth drive. Look at those last two, Todd. Yeah. Starting to come on here a little bit. And in both of them, it was a steady dose of power running. The, the first one, they had the short field, and they strictly ran the football. And the last one, they came out with some heavy formations and ran the football. And Trey Millard was a, a key factor in both of those scoring drives. So Texas forced to punt for the first time today. And it was only 24 yards, giving Bell and the Sooners good field possession. Millard alongside the jet sweep look and they're going to lead Blake Bell and not much doing because of Adrian Phillips. Adrian Phillips a pretty active safety here today. Well the second run for Blake Bell in the game the first one was a scramble on third down. This was a designed run with a longhorn down. And that is Phillips who is down and they can ill afford to lose him very long I'll tell you. Todd, take a look at uh, Miller for us. He's so versatile. He does so many things. I mean, he can run the football, obviously. He's a big, powerful runner as a fullback. He's also a key blocker in all of the stuff that they do. You see him get the edge here for Ford. And then he's extra dangerous coming out of the backfield as a receiver. He had 119 yards of receiving yards against Texas in the game last year. And then he plays on every special team. So, I mean, he is... A guy who does a lot, who's going to play for a long time in the NFL if he stays healthy because he's so versatile and can do so many things. So it's 23-13. Heather, down there on the field, it's it's comfortable up here, but, but tell me, what's it like down on the field here at the Cotton Bowl today? It is unseasonably hot, extremely humid, extremely hot. The sun peeks in and out of the clouds, but when the sun pops out, it is, uh, it is definitely very brutal. A lot of the players taking extra fluids. It's interesting, the cooling systems on each side, Texas has those misting fans. Oklahoma actually has a system that runs ice cold water through their benches, through vented benches, to keep them cool. So you see a lot of players sitting down more often than normal but certainly the elements something that the players and really quite honestly all of us are struggling with today all right so there you have it a little war of attrition going on yeah here, and you know it was it's warm obviously in austin and norman this time of year but not the same kind of heat that you're used to in august and september and, and as heather said it's unseasonably warm and humid and uh, it takes its toll that's for sure plus you've got the emotion and the adrenaline of a game like this compounds that 23-13, Texas leads Oklahoma by 10. This is a second and eight, third quarter. Let's see if they go after Josh Turner, the young man who came in in place of Adrian Phillips. He's number five. Damian Williams. What are they doing? Oh, what a play by Santos. You know, he is not the fastest linebacker, but if you read things quickly, watch him how quickly he read the play and a direct line to the ball. That's a perfect tackling angle taken by Santos to get the stop right behind the line of scrimmage. On third down, Bell is back. Going to fire deep, incomplete. Shepard diving after the ball. But it forces Oklahoma to punt and another third down failure. Shepard dove, but he didn't stick his hands out. I'm kind of understand what. Why not at least reach your arms out and try to get a hand on the football? He just kind of dove nose first with no hands. Barnett punting. 
Johnson back deep. Deshae Johnson standing back on the 15 yard line. And now the officials stop it. Delay. Offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. So you wonder if he isn't more comfortable. He had a big leg that we've seen here, but but you would think right there that no. they would not have taken a no, delay they, they a game. No, they didn't do that, that on purpose. No. no, they were checking from the sideline. They changed some kind of protection, and that just took too much time. Here's Johnson inside the 20 at the 15. He's got an alley. 40, 45, and he's headed for the end zone. A Longhorn touchdown. 85 yards for Johnson. of the two sides to tell you the story here at the gun bowl. And they blocked the extra point. Remember, it's a live ball. Last year, Texas scored two points on a blocked extra point. When you return a punt, it's critical to make the first guy miss. He did that. Trey Franks, number 32, was the first guy to miss. And then a bad angle by the punter, Honeycutt. But check that Barnett. Too much speed once he got into the extra. Now watch this blocked extra point. Farrah did not get it up in the air. Aerial coverage of the Cotton Bowl provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear. More driven. That is the first kickoff return for a touchdown in over a decade against Oklahoma. And folks, it is a 16-point game with that blocked extra point, meaning it is a two-score game because of the two-point conversion. The extra point would have made it a three-score game. Just one of those little things yep. to keep in mind as we go forward here. Clay is back deep with Finch. Finch has had a big kickoff return in the first half for the Sooners. There's the last one, Jeremy Bloom. He had great speed for Colorado for the Buffaloes. Come out on the 25. Punt return, you got to make one guy miss, and you got to pick up a couple blocks. He got two. Right here, number two, McKeel Thompson. Number 23, Carrington Bindham. Both get blocks that they stay with. They don't give up on the blocks, and that's all that Daje Johnson needed. He made the first guy miss. He picked up a couple great blocks, and then he beat everybody else in the end zone. As he takes it to the end zone, greeted by the quarterback McCoy. And Damian Williams will be Blake Bell's running back to open this series for the Sooners. Damian. Good strong 15 yard run for Damian. Well, the, the point that you mentioned, that it's just a two score game and we're still in the middle of the third quarter. There's no reason to panic for Oklahoma. You can still run the football. You found something that works in your last couple possessions. Running at this Texas defense. Try to take some steam out of them and use your big body. So you don't have to give that up just because you're trailing now by 16 points. Down and 10 sticking on the ground. 
And Miller comes out the other end that time. When you run the ball like this, it gives you some opportunities to throw some play action passes down the field. They hit Millard on the last drive for a nice play action pass. I wouldn't be surprised to see him give it a shot here on this possession. You've run well, fake it, draw the linebackers up and see if you can get a big one down the field. This heat and humidity tough on the defensive lineman. Chris Whaley has scored a touchdown in the first half, has been struggling and he's been off the field. Cutback run that time and that's short of the first down. So here comes up the third down. Yeah, this has been kind of the ball game. You know, the third down is always a game within the game. Texas 9 of 13. Oklahoma only 1 of 8 on third down conversions. But we haven't seen many of these kind of situations. Third and relatively short for the Sooners. Blake Bell running the football in this situation is a viable option. And Whaley does check in for the defensive line for Greg Robinson on this third and two. Great Keith Ford second effort. The freshman picks up the first down, carries the tackler with him. Just as you said, Todd, this is a powerful young yeah. runner. Well, and it shows you what the Oklahoma coaches think of him. Third and two, critical football game. You have him on the field instead of your older guys. You trust his ability to get that first down. First and ten. Bell had time. Incomplete. Let's check in down below with Heather. Brent, the Texas defense still without senior safety Adrian Phillips. He's been telling the athletic training staff that his head and neck was yanked to the left, causing a severe amount of neck pain. They've been testing that arm, neck, and shoulder strength, and he's been grimacing during the testing. His return is doubtful. That puts a lot of pressure on that secondary. It. This is going to be third and long. Malcolm Brown, the defensive Brown, makes the stop for the Horns. You know, when this whole thing blew up for Texas and their defense and they changed coordinators, it was after the BYU game, a game where BYU's quarterback, Taysom Hill, ran the ball for 259 yards. You just can't say enough about the change and the improvement in the Texas run defense from that point to this point. Absolutely. Third down. Bell trying to find an open target through high and it's intercepted at the 30 yard line through it right to Duke Thomas. That's the second interception yeah. thrown by Blake Bell here today. The first one was a pick six. And this is just a mistake. Watch how happy his feet are. He doesn't see what he likes to throw on time. He never sets his feet. And then instead of throwing it away, he throws it in a position where they can get picked off. The third down problems continue to plague Blake Bell. This came on third down again, Todd. Yeah, well, they're two of ten on third down. And this one is he just got caught. He didn't like what he saw. He kind of panicked. He knew he probably should throw it away, but he didn't throw it out of bounds. He threw it in the field of play. And instead of punting the football, Texas gets it off the interception. Now it's up to Case McCoy and the Texas offense. Gray for the left side for a couple of yards as we take a look again, Todd, at the the woes that have beset Blake Bell and the Sooners on third down so far in this game. Well, the problem has been they've been off schedule. He's one of seven for 12 yards with a couple picks, but they've had a lot of third and long situations. They've not been effective running the football on early downs, and that set up a lot of... Great big hole right 
right side and stopped from getting the first down by Gabe Lynn. Stood him up. The free safety from Tulsa and Jenks High School. Outstanding high school football program up there in the state of Oklahoma. They move quickly now trying to get it. Striker and he pulled him over. Went for the first down on that play. Gabe, a great hit. Gabe Lynn is one of two seniors on this starting defense. It's a pretty young defense. Gabe Lynn and Aaron Coleman, the only two seniors, especially now with Corey Nelson out. Big hit that time. Big Gray picks up the first down for Texas. And, uh, so the ball is out to the Horns 40 yard line. And DeJay Johnson returned that hunt for a touchdown into the backfield. And this is DeJay right here. Look at the cut back. And he's smoking. Well, Oklahoma looks better in their run defense this quarter. There's no question about it. Even though they gave up a first down here a couple plays ago, they look better. The big guys are getting off of blocks. They're getting more penetration. And they're making it a little bit more difficult for Texas to run. Might, might come down a little bit more Case McCoy passing for Texas to loosen up the defense here in the third quarter. Yeah, only 11 passing. I should say 11 rushing yards. You saw that graphic. Second down and nine. Brown with behind McCoy. This is Malcolm Brown. Behind the left side. Picking up two, three yards. So now it is the Longhorns turn on third down, Todd. And the other thing, the other subtle thing that Texas has had an advantage of in this game, not just on the scoreboard with points, they're winning the turnover, they're winning third down, and they've had better field position. They've kind of controlled the field position in this football game so far as well. First down, McCoy slips it into Kendall Sanders' grasp on the near side for the first down. Working on their best defender, Colvin. Colvin thought that Sanders pushed off before he caught the ball. There's a tempo play after the first down. Malcolm Brown, Malcolm Brown to the 45, Colvin with the stop. Man to man, Colvin has his hands on. I don't know, I think that's a good no call. I mean, that's just good hand fighting by both guys. And now a player is down, and of course the Texas fans respond. They think they were faking because they were trying to do tempo, but yeah, it's but Colvin. If, if you're going to fake, you're not going to fake with him because you, you don't right. want him off the field. You got one of the designated <laughs> biggins that's to get right. that. <laughs> Let's check in with Robert Flores for an update. Robert. All right, Brent staying in the Big 12. Texas Tech and Iowa State. Davis Webb in on in relief. Three touchdowns so far today. This one to Bradley Marquez. Red Raiders leading 28-21 over Iowa State. All right, and here, Texas upsetting Oklahoma 29-13. Colvin taking himself out over there. I mean, he was shaking left up shoulder, on that play, no question. They told him to go down right there, though. <laughs> Cortez Johnson, he's a redshirt sophomore from New Orleans. He will replace the young man in the secondary. Second down and six. First down, he came rumbling across that 40-yard line. Powerful yeah. run to the to the 38. Created just enough confusion with the fake sweep to Shipley. A rare under the center play for Texas. Instead of the shotgun for McCoy, under the center on that run play. And they keep him right there, too. Final seconds of the third quarter. Pump fake. 
Going to go deep, far side. Caught. Davis. Touchdown, Texas. They go double move. A pump fake. Got Zach Sanchez to take a peek back at the quarterback. And Mike Davis ran right by him. Beautiful throw over the outside shoulder, impossible to defend. Case McCoy has thrown some beautiful balls today, none better than that one. Somewhere in San Francisco, his brother is cheering. Mike Davis's first catch today, a 38 yard touchdown. Anthony Farah tacks on the extra point. Texas 36 Oklahoma 13 Texas had two tight ends in the game they're showing run all the way and they fooled Oklahoma with the pass it's single coverage on the red shirt freshman and Mike Davis fools him and again Case McCoy when it is counted his balls down the field have been perfect First half, we showed McCoy's quote yeah. about how he needed to win this game because people were going to remember it for the rest of his life. Now we all thought, "Hey, why are you putting that much pressure on yourself?" I think he kind of knew what he was doing. Right now, he's the star of stars for the Longhorns because he has not pressed it at all either. He has taken what the game. will kick it away for the horns. Bench and Clay again back deep. Coming out on the 25. No return on that one. This is just the start of a busy day in college football. Michigan, Penn State, I'm going to ask Todd about that one. Texas A&M against Ole Miss. How about the uh, the Wolverines going into Penn State, Todd? Well, you know, Michigan has been kind of funny this year. They, they just haven't looked like what I think everybody expected them to look like the last few weeks. I think they're the better team going in there, but young Christian Hackenberg for a true freshman. Bill O'Brien's offense has played extremely well. So here are the yards by half. You can see that the Longhorns gained 303 in the first half, only 72 in the second. But the most important, that last 38 yeah. for a touchdown. And the punt return for a touchdown. So they didn't need the total offense. Absolutely. Then. There's the jet sweep. And Oklahoma was bringing Roy Finch, the running back, around that time. He had a 73-yard kickoff return. Coming toward the end of the third quarter. Pump fake by Bell in trouble. Now he has to throw it away. And again, it was almost intercepted you know on that far side by Here, Bindham. Bindham didn't know where the ball was. Blake Bell again was trying to throw this ball away, but he threw it too close to the field of play. And if Bindham would have had his eyes on the ball, he might have had another interception. If you're going to throw the ball away, throw it up into about the fourth row. So we come now to the last five seconds here. Texas rushes four. Bell comes back, and that's short of the first down. So when you come back to start the money quarter, it'll be third down for the Oklahoma Sooners. And we'll be back with the fourth quarter after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Sooner schooner ponies can't believe it. They're trailing Bebo 36 to 13.
You know, Todd, you made the point about that game against Iowa State coming on a Thursday night regarding Texas. Well, it, it gave them a couple extra days for preparation for Oklahoma, but even more important, a couple days to rest bodies. And I think that's been a huge factor, especially with the heat that Heather's talked about here today. So Finch will open up as a running back. They like to flurry him as they do here, but Bell's looking downfield in a foot race in trouble. Has to throw it away and then it didn't reach the line of scrimmage. Didn't even get close to the line of scrimmage. Cedric Reed all over him. He was outside the tackle box, so he's allowed to throw it away, but the ball must cross the line of scrimmage in order for it to not be intentional grounding. And the officials are confirming right now. That's it. Wasn't close. And it's a loss of down, too, which is even worse. So the third down problems continue. Johnson, who's already taken one punt for a touchdown for Texas, is back deep. Barnett. And the problems are mounting for the Sooners here. Strong punt fielded at the 15 yard line by Johnson. Well, they've been glad to get him back. You know, he missed three games with an ankle injury. He just came back against Iowa State. Well, the last time an unranked Texas beat a ranked Oklahoma, you got to go all the way back to 92. Picardier threw a 31 yard pass to Burleson. That made it 17 10. Phil Brown ran it in. 24-10. Texas went on for the upset 34-24. And here they are, a two-touchdown underdog leading Oklahoma as we've entered the fourth quarter. Let's check in with Robert Flores for an update, Robert. That never say die, dogs. Had it again. Second down and seven. You know, Texas, it's interesting. Defensively, they learned a lot and took a lot from what TCU did to Oklahoma. Offensively, a lot of what they're doing today with two tight ends and power running came from the Notre Dame game. Notre, see, when Bob Stoops made the change to this defense to go three down linemen and get more speed, that's to play in the Big 12. It's not to play against big physical running games. They did against Notre Dame, but they still got the win. And Texas taking the football right at them with big people. And Gray behind that offensive line has rushed for 100 yards here today. Didn't get anything. Big stop. Big stop on third down that time by the So the Sooners trailing 36 to 13. Need to strike quickly. They, they just have not shown much of a threat down the field with any kind of big plays so far through the first three quarters. You wonder if Bob would try to block a punt in this situation, but he takes Stryker back off the field. And they set the return. They want the ball in this situation. Fair catch signal for at the 24 yard line. So that's where the Sooners will have it when you come back as you're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. 10 a.m. Eastern, Sunday NFL countdown on ESPN. A look at the owner's box at Gillette Stadium in New England, which seems to have become the place to see celebrities. Better the Patriots see some receivers in the end zone than the celebrities in the owner's box, eh? And then it's fantasy football now. Here's a tip. Start every Bronco. <laughs> I can't believe a team is a four touchdown favorite in the National Football League. Roy Finch is a running back now. Oklahoma trailing at 36 to 13.
First down, near side. He snaps that one off to Roy Finch, was the intended target. Well, we were talking in the commercial. I mean, Oklahoma, three scores behind. They just have not shown the ability to create explosive plays in the ballgame. Texas will give them plays like that. Absolutely. Here's second down. Trying to get something. There's a penalty flag on that play. It is caught for a first down at the 40, but there is a penalty. Before that play, Oklahoma has only had one pass completion of 15 yards or more and three runs Pressure of 10 foul. yards or more. Hands in the face. Number 74 on offense. 15-yard penalty, second down. That's Adam Sheed, the left guard. He's their best lineman. Very powerful run blocker, number 74. He's got his hands up into the face working on Malcolm Brown. Wasn't a lot, but it was enough to draw the flag. You know, another thing about this game, been five penalties against the Sooners, only two against yeah. the Longhorns. They've won every little game within the game. Second down and 20. <laughs> Bell has an open man, and he overthrew him. Saunders broke open at the end of that, but he couldn't connect. You talk about explosive plays. If you want to win games in the evenly matched kind of games, you got to create explosive plays. Again, only three explosive runs, one explosive pass in the whole ball game for Oklahoma to this point. And not a favorite on third and 20. Third down today, Oklahoma is 2 of 11, and now they face a third and 20. Sacked down at the nine-yard line. Couldn't pick up the blitzer. Quandre Diggs, the nickel man, was coming hard. Well, it's another zone blitz. Third and long. Why not try something? Try to get pressure. We got the pressure coming here. Jeff Coates going to drop into coverage. Zone blitz, unblocked, unaccounted for man. And they get the sack. There is no doubt that a veteran football coach by the name of Greg Robinson has made an enormous impact on this Texas defense. Johnson's back deep, and the Horns figure to get excellent field position. Johnson's got it. Steps off quickly to the right. Slipped that first tackle again, and then he's down at the 41-yard line. There are some folks wearing crimson who have headed for the exit. Let me repeat, people in crimson are leaving early. See college football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings, the official hangout for NCAA football. Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. And Progressive, comparing rates to help you save. Now that's Progressive. Well, the Hall of State here commemorates the history of the state of Texas and has an exhibit spotlighting the history of the Big Tex statue. You might recall that last October, Big Tex had a bad night. Down of flames, and uh, it was sad around here, but now the newer, bigger, improved version is back. That big tax cost a half million dollars, but well worth it. Nice to have you with us again, big tax. You look down on the State Fair of Texas scene here, Midway, and all those people will pour out and have a great time. Well, Maybe not everybody will have a great time, eh? These folks wearing crimson and having a hard time believing their eyes. Yeah. This was the biggest that Texas has been an underdog in a football game since 1989. 14-point underdog here today. And Todd, you were telling me when you quickly checked, Texas won that game also. Yeah, they were a 17 and a half point underdog. Oklahoma had won the previous five in a row. And Texas pulled the upset 28 to 24 in that one. 
Now, the last quarterback to win was older brother Colt McCoy, 2009. And, and how about this, huh? A little nod to younger yeah. brother, huh? Sorry about that, Colt. Uh, Case is outdoing you today, my friend. And I still go back to the quote on Monday. Everybody kind of overreacted. Yes. Said, oh, why'd you say that? Don't do that. He knew what he was doing. I mean, he was just excited to play, and he has played within himself today in a great fashion. Going to go deep down that far sideline. Receiver was covered, and Davis made a crack at it down there. Cortez Johnson with him. And uh, take a look at this, Todd. Well, it had to be great coverage because it's another nice throw. A lot of double moves by this Texas pass offense, but Johnson in perfect position to make a play on the ball. See how he's had his eyes on the football? He knew exactly where the ball was, and when the receiver's hands went up, his hands went up too. I'm going to tell you, Mike Davis is going to get a long look at Sunday football too. He's a senior from Skyline High School and uh, he made a great effort on that ball with the one hand. Third down. Here's McCoy. Gonna, oh, throw it away to the nose man on a screen play. Oh my goodness. Is this the second defensive lineman to score? It is Gino Grissom. How do you do? They're trying to throw a middle screen. You think it's a safe play to Malcolm Brown, number 28. But it was well played and executed by Grissom. Just when you think Case McCoy can relax a little bit, he makes a bad mistake. Showing a little bit of speed as he takes that one to the end zone. So Gino Grissom for the Sooners, and in the first half, it was big Chris Whaley. And uh, no doubt Gino makes his first career interception. He makes it pay off, doesn't he? And the first interception of the season for Case McCoy as well. Now, Chris Whaley had one earlier. That's yeah. his second, okay, when he got that touchdown for the Orange in the first half. Well, the battle see. of the biggins here. 54-yard interception return. And they're checking to see what they might want to do here. They have the honey cut. He makes this, it'll be a two score, 16 point game. That close, no need to burn a timeout in that situation. Yeah. Take the, take your medicine and uh, try to make this a two-score game. Well, let's see if that play by the Oklahoma defense shoots some new life into the Sooners because uh, they're going to have to come right back on the field. And again, for Case McCoy in this Texas offense where they might have been able to take their foot off the gas a little bit, not so much right now. With the 10 minutes to go. It's a two-score game. 36-20. That was a great interception by the big fella. Looks like an athlete too, doesn't it? So following us, Michigan Penn State will be a little bit later today, 5 p.m. Eastern. And that'll be followed by Texas A&M and Ole Miss. Our buddy Kirk Herbstreit, along with his constant companion Darren Brown, are winging their way to <laughs> Oxford, Mississippi. So, hook up with Brad Nessler. They'll have that game tonight. That should be a good one, fun to watch. Johnny Manziel is always a treat. He's going to come up with Johnson and Bergeron. Go back deep on this game. story of the game has been the Texas defense. Throughout the game, they have played outstanding, stopping both the run and tackling well in the short passing game of Oklahoma. 200 yards of offense for the Sooners. 
And then it was the big punt return by Dodgy Johnson. They got the score from the special teams. And then on offense, Case McCoy has thrown the ball very well, managed the offense except for his last play. The interception return for a touchdown has changed the dynamics of this game a little bit. Ten minutes remaining, so we see what kind of time the Horns can eat up. They start with Jonathan Gray. He's thrown down after about a four-yard game. Let us check in with Robert Flores. All right, Brent, crazy game right now on ESPN between number seven, Georgia, and number 25, Missouri. Double pass, Bud Sasser to LaDamian Washington. Great catch with defenders hanging all over him. Missouri leading 34-26, 7.58 to play between the hedges. Yeah, very good game there as it is here. 36-20, Oklahoma trying to climb back in it. And it is Gray for the first down. I'm impressed with him. I think he's going to be an outstanding back at the University of Texas. Gets better every time he plays, every game he plays. Doing a better job of protecting that football in this game. A couple near fumbles there in the, the game against Iowa State. But over the last five ball games now, he has really started to turn it up. And you can see what he's done against Oklahoma compared with a year ago. He has terrific vision. We had him in the Kansas State game up in Austin. He sees his daylight very, very well. He's out the white working on the clock, and then he picks up additional yards. He makes a guy miss with that vision and does a smart thing of staying in bounds because right now the clock is your friend. So you just keep feeding this guy the ball as much as he's capable of running it and hope your offensive line continues to win. Tempo for the first down. Banging right straight ahead. And again, Todd, we want to go back. Mention that offensive front for Texas. Espinoza is the center. Hopkins and Walters are the guards. Estelle and Hawkins the tackles. And overall, on a muggy day in Dallas, they have really performed well. They've controlled the game. The, the, Texas has controlled the football game with their front on both sides for the majority of the ball game. He's working away on that clock right now with Gray. Gray well over 100 yards. You know, the, the offensive line coach is Stacy Searles. Yep. And he's a good football man. Yep. Good player himself. Good player. Spent a lot of years coaching in the SEC. Knows about playing power football. Gray, Todd, incidentally, now has 125 yards. And Malcolm Brown will give him a little bit of a blow. And if you're Case McCoy right now, you're working clock as much as you can. Don't snap that ball until the play clock gets down inside of five the most you can. So here comes Brown, and he too's got a chance to, to hit 100. He's well over 80 now. Allowing 113 yards per game rushing. Uh, shot of Stacy, the offensive line coach, who's done an excellent job. In fact, this entire coaching staff at Texas, you know, with all the buzz that goes on around the country, they just shut their ears and went to work. Well, tonight the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup heats up under the lights in Charlotte, one of the great tracks in NASCAR. Don't miss the Bank of America 500 Charlotte tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern on ABC. Matt Kinseth on the left, Jimmy Johnson coming after him. So down on the Texas sideline, very happy person. That's the athletic director who will be retiring next year sometime, DeLos Dodds. And he, of course, is so happy to see that Mac Brown and the troops have rallied in this game. He, of course, was a former track star up at Kansas State, up in Manhattan. Had a chance to chat with him on the elevator. Coming up today, very nice man. Did a heck of a job down there. Malcolm Brown and Jonathan Gray are in the backfield. That timeout by Oklahoma did more for Texas because it kept Jonathan Gray a little rest. And they were ready for that draw play, though, that time. Yep. It's big Geno Grissom who scored on that touchdown, shutting him down, and Oklahoma's going to get the ball back at around the uh, 720 mark here, it looks like. Robert Flores for an update. All right, Frank, here's a nominee for AT&T All-America Player of the Week. Army running back Terry Baggett, 18 carries, 
304 yards and four touchdowns as Army beat Eastern Michigan. It broke Army's single game rushing record. Congratulations to Terry Baggett. If you'd like to vote, text vote to 34763. Brent. All right, thank you. And here it is, 36-20, coming down with the final 7-22. Oklahoma burned a timeout, Todd, yeah, right there. Two on this drive, so they've left themselves with one timeout and a 16-point deficit here with 7-22 left. Farah hasn't kicked the last two very well. He needs a good one here. And he hung it up. Fair catch at the 15. Well, Todd, you're the one who researched this about Alabama and Texas after their championship game and the injury to Colt McCoy. How two great, great brands in college football have gone in opposite yeah. directions. Well, and part of that has been recruiting as much as anything. Nick Saban has recruited extremely well during that time. And you, where you see that is in the national championships, obviously, in the first round NFL draft picks. That first year after the game they played was almost identical in the NFL draft. And from that point on, Alabama kind of had an upward trajectory and Texas had a downward trajectory in the NFL draft as well as uh, in the win-loss column. First down and 10. Bell on that slant. Big game, Bester. And he has run out of bounds at the 35-yard line. A lot of time left here. That's a 47-yard gain. And this is the first play that Texas did not tackle well on the short throw. About a three-yard pass, three missed tackles, and a big gain down the field. A chunk play down the field off a very short completion. Saunders still battling at the 30-yard line. It'll be second down. Helmet came off, so he's going to have to leave for a play. He took a real shot. Did a nice job of adjusting his body to make the catch. Second down. Technical difficulty. Our switcher locked up, but you come right back to that big run around the right side by Brennan Clay. So that was Brennan Clay swinging it. It'll be a first and goal. There's a Longhorn defender down, Dalton Santos. That was a 19 yard run here. Great block by Trey Millard and also Daryl Williams, the right tackle, leading that play. So Santos being tended to. And with 6.16 to go, a yeah, lot of time absolutely. in this football game. But the one thing that Oklahoma has to get ready for, and I'm sure Texas will know it's probably going to the bell dozer for that two-point conversion. Yeah. I mean, that's the one thing you've got to be thinking of immediately when you score here. Well, they have a lot of different options in how they run. Blake Bell. I mean, they'll do quarterback draw, they do quarterback power, they do quarterback counter, and they also have a little option off of it. Robert Flores, what's up? All right, Brent, coming up on either ABC or ESPN2, Gary Anderson in Wisconsin taking on Pat Fitzgerald and Northwestern. Northwestern trying to come off that disappointing loss to Ohio State. Or some of you on either ABC or ESPN2 will see Taj Boyd. 107 total touchdowns, second most in ACC. It'll be Clemson hosting Boston College. That's coming up after you guys are done at the Cotton Bowl. So it's good to see Santos up on his feet here. we come over to the sideline. The ball is resting on the Longhorns 11 yard line. We have 616 to play. Oklahoma is down a couple of touchdowns and they'll need two point conversions and two touchdowns to draw even. And 
Jackson checks in late for the Longhorns. They set the defense. Miller swinging to the left. Not going to get much. That's good defense. Good pursuit and good leverage. They didn't allow him to get outside and turn the corner on the defense, and they tackled him inbound. You have to maintain leverage. You keep that outside arm free. Very nice job out there by McKeel Thompson, number two. And Jeff was in on there, too. Second down and eight. Brennan Clay. Down toward five and a half. Going to the far corner of the end zone. Out of the end zone, incomplete. Jazz Reynolds. Double move, he had him. Throw that to the back pylon, just a little bit too far. Had what they wanted. Had the corner who bit on the fake, just threw the ball too far out of the corner of the end zone. Third down and eight. Incomplete. Fourth down. And that was a good throw by Blake Bell. The play before, he threw it out of the field of play. That one was a very catchable pass that Jazz Reynolds just didn't handle. If he catches this, he might be able to stick it forward for a first down. Just inside the one. Oh, did they get the play off or not? Oh, my gosh. No excuse for that down there. None. Well, that you changes cannot do that. Dramatically. I mean, you go from fourth. Wow. Fourth and seven with a chance to get a first down inside the one if you don't score to fourth and 12. Slot it to the right. In trouble. Texas football, 5.15 to go after the Jeff Coach sack. Number 44, a senior from Plano who has never experienced a win over Oklahoma as a Texas Longhorn with a sack on fourth down. Just a four-man rush. Both ends collapse the pocket. Jeff Coat got the sack, but Cedric Reed coming from the other side. He crunched it also. They beat both tackles and got the sack on fourth down. Boy, what a costly, costly delay a gay penalty, though, prior to that play. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen in a rivalry game. Texas comes in, two touchdown underdog, head coach on the hot seat. And they respond like this today. Now from Brown. So, Todd, let's take a look at uh, today's All-State Good Hands play. Well, Mike Davis, we said he had to have an impact in the game. Six foot two, 195 pounds senior. Little double move, beat the freshman corner, Zach Sanchez. And then with the great extension for the catch right before the goal line. Pretty nice throw by Case McCoy. Great hands on the other end by Mike Davis. You see his career, and he has been a great one in Austin. Second down and four. Up, winds down inside of four and a half minutes. Well, and we've said it today a couple of times. Case McCoy's played beautiful. 
Uh, Jonathan Gray has, has proven to be a big-time back. The receivers have made plays. But this offensive line for Texas and the defensive front seven of the Texas defense, man, it's, it's been one in the trenches. This game is a physical contest, and it's been one up front by Texas on both sides of the ball. So Mac Brown can smile for at least a week. <laughs> and then it'll be, what have you done for me lately, Mac? Get a little break. And then on October 26th, go to TCU, play them at Fort Worth. Austin will be Kansas. And it is into Morgantown. But folks, look at the last three games. The gauntlet. Oklahoma State, Texas Tech, and point a minute plus Baylor at Waco, December 7th. Yeah. And, and the crazy thing is, as rough as the start was for Texas to get into this season and the debacle up in Provo and the firing of the defensive coordinator, their main goal was still to win the Big 12. And so if they can win this game today, that would put them at 3-0 and in the league and with a little bit of an inside track toward an automatic BCS berth. Third down and two. First down, Texas. The clock will stop. Oklahoma now out of timeouts. They'll reset the chains. And the final four minutes coming up. And Burnt Orange Nation is ready to celebrate. First down and 10. Strong eight yard run. Todd, you saw some things in that Iowa State game too about, uh, about Texas that night, that Thursday night in Ames. Well, you know, we've seen the, de the defense of Texas tonight play as well as they played all year, but there was a point in that game last Thursday that really kind of turned the game around defensively. Even though they gave up 463 yards to Iowa State, when the game was on the line, when it really mattered, their defense stepped up and made some plays. And I think they have carried the momentum of that into this ball game today and have played an outstanding football game. First down at midfield. Iowa State had the ball second and one. They could have gained the first down. They're winning by three. If they score a touchdown, the game's probably out of reach. Two plays in a row. The Texas defense rose up, got the stop, forced a field goal, kept it at a six-point game, and that led to the game-winning drive that Case McCoy took them on. 70 yards in under three minutes. Scored on a one-yard sneak to win the game up in Ames. But it was those two defensive plays, I think, that spearheaded that victory, and they've carried it over here today. First down and 10, final two and a half minutes. They're in the Cotton Bowl. And let us check in with Robert Flores. Robert. Yes, indeed. So Missouri with its biggest win of the season. Everybody wanted to see how they would perform against Georgia. And now we know second down and three. Last year that Missouri team suffered one injury after another. Here's Jonathan Gray. 100 yard rush, rush today performance. He's had a great game for the Longhorns. Run for 123 yards, 29 carries for the Longhorns. They've had excellent balance. Of course, they don't need to throw the ball anymore at this point, but the, the offensive balance they started the game with and maintained through the first three quarters has kept this Oklahoma defense on its heels all day. So the golden hat goes to Austin. And for the first time, this senior class playing today for the Texas Longhorns will experience what it's like to beat Oklahoma. Malcolm Brown for the first down and Brown 116 yards on the day to go with Gray's 123. You know and they're beating them the way you love to beat your rival by punching them right in the mouth. You know this wasn't a finesse win. This wasn't a, a trick them kind of win. This was a lineup and punch them in the mouth 
and you got the last one. And you have to feel happy for Mac Brown, who has answered every question, talked about all the pressure, and has said one thing repeatedly. You've got to win, and then you've got to win again. And that gets you the, off the hot seat. That's the only thing that will stop the critics. And here today, Matt Brown and the Texas Longhorns are coming away with a big upset win over their arch rival. And they won this game in every conceivable way. Outrushing their opponent. They won the turnovers. <laughs> oh, that was a beautiful <laughs> trenching. Oh, that was beautiful. <laughs> and he deserves it. Absolutely. The Texas Longhorns upset their rival, the Oklahoma Sooners. When this day began, how many of you expected Mac Brown to be drenched on the sideline with a victory shower? When you take a look at the Big 12, just what Todd Blackledge told you, 3-0 and over there on the right. Forget those two non-conference losses. Mac has always said, let's win it. Let's go down to Heather Cox with a very happy Mac Brown. Heather. Indeed he is. Coach, congratulations. What does this win do for you in this program? Oh, it gets us 3-0 and in the Big 12. And that's what we wanted, Heather. Proud of the guys moving forward. Now you got to beat TCU. And this is the first win in this series for your senior class. How important was it to get them a, a win over the Sooners before they left? Yeah, it was very important because they need to get that golden hat. It's an important thing between these two schools. They haven't been able to do that. So proud of them today. And you told me that the only way to quiet the naysayers is to win. So what kind of statement does this one make? Not worried about that. We're worried about TCU. Lastly, Coach, your, your quarterback, Case McCoy, you asked him when he came in to not be a riverboat gambler, to simply manage the game. How impressed were you with the way he handled today's pressure? He did a great job. Case handled every situation that came up, even with the interception for a touchdown on the screen, which was unfortunate. He came right back out there and led our team. You going to go put that golden hat on, Coach? I don't know if I'll put it on, but I'm going to watch those things. Just put it on, Heather. Coach, thanks. Congrats. Well, Todd, a, a great moment for the Longhorns. Absolutely, and, and a well-deserved victory. They, they won in every facet of the game. They were the more physical team. They were the more proficient team on third down in the red zone. Every way you could slice it up, they were the better team today. Indeed, Todd. 445 yards of offense compared with 263 yards of offense for Oklahoma. On third down, Texas was 13 of 20, and Oklahoma was 2 of 13. McCoy was not sacked today. Bell was sacked three times. So there you have it, 36-20. Texas upsets Oklahoma. And we'll go to John Saunders in the studio right after these messages. So long, everybody. Against Oregon. Oklahoma and Texas. Mac have been beaten by 80 the last two times. Hadn't won in three years. Hadn't led since 2009. But Blake Bell finds a wide open Chris Whaley and the former running back who ate his way out of the backfield and into the defensive line. <laughs> gobbled up some yardage and had the pick six. How did it happen, Lou? Well, you just see they're going to act like they're rushing seven people up front. But notice that two linemen are going to drop out. Consequently, that one guy comes free, and it forces Blake Bell to make a quick decision. He throws an inaccurate pass to the crossing receiver, and consequently, the interception and the touchdown. Whaley knew what to do with it from his old running back days. I'm sure he dreamed of being able to do it. Greg Robinson, now the defensive coordinator, mark another blitz package that he threw at Blake Bell. And it was a great job of designing it against Blake Bell. And what he wanted to do is he wanted to try to confuse him in the zone blitz scheme. And Greg Robinson, this was probably the best game that he called as a defensive coordinator with the Longhorns this season, without a doubt. And it confused the Oklahoma offense. Even so, the Sooners seemed to be settled down, thought they might be on the verge of getting momentum. And then to Jay Johnson, to Jay, bye bye. Run for the golden hat. Run for the corny dog. Run for the fried butter at the State Fair outside the old Cotton Bowl. First punt return for a touchdown Oklahoma's allowed since 2002, and the speedster took it 85 yards. 
Case McCoy said he would be remembered for the way he played in this game for the rest of his life. Said that before the game. Going to be good memories. Mike Davis scores 36-20 hooker. It's all about how you play. And if you go out there and you stand around, you probably can't beat anybody. <clears throat> you go out there ready to play. Even if you mess things up, like we messed some things up today, but we were focused, we were tough, uh, we were confident, uh, resilient, in great shape, uh, and, and these guys did not let up at all. So I think that's why people love college football so much, and that's why you all have to be careful what you say. You know, when you give up, a, got an interception for a touchdown, a punt return for a touchdown, uh, it, those are always difference makers in this game, uh, and they were, you know, a big part of the game again today. So Oklahoma, I mean, this game was not as close as the score indicated. Now, I know that they, Texas didn't put 60 on them the way Oklahoma has the last couple of years. Texas was a tougher team. Mm -hmm. They were the more physical team, and they were the team that took the fight to Oklahoma in this game. On both sides of the line of scrimmage, and you look at their offensive line, they rushed the ball for 254 yards in this game. They didn't rush the ball for over 125 yards in the last two games combined against Oklahoma. Terrific job of combination blocking here on the edge, pushing the Oklahoma defenders down the field. Here, watch Malcolm Brown does a terrific job. He's going to beat the Garden Center. He's able by himself to pressure Blake Bell. That's the hustle that this defense got, which they hadn't been getting the entire season. This defense and this game plan, the offense and defensive line in the trenches on both sides, won the game for the Texas Longhorns. They haven't played like this all season. Yeah, but what a beautifully coached game this was by Coach Brown and his staff, but it's third down. See, no matter how you play on the first two downs, if you don't play well on third down, you're going to have to stay out on the field. Texas, the first half was 9 out of 11 on third down, 13 out of 20 for the entire game. On the other hand, Oklahoma was only 2 out of 12 on third down conversion. This is third down and 8. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not talking about third and 1, third and 2, third and 8, and they make a critical pass. Now it's third down and 12. We always had great success on third down because we're third and 1, third and 2. On third down and 12, you don't make a living on that, make an offensive play call. The Texans did a beautiful job. Oklahoma did not respond. Longhorns, this is the third and four against Oklahoma. The Longhorns converted their first six third downs when they had seven or more yards to go. But the Sooners, on the other hand, a lot of their poor plays, including the pick six, came on third down. And, and Bell, who is, uh, who's who's got some experience, some of his inexperience showed in dealing with uh, uh, There's no doubt and he'll go home and he'll feel terrible, but he'll learn from it, he'll benefit from it. You, you, you just have to be there sometime in order to learn. And perhaps reports of Mac Brown's demise have been greatly exaggerated, at least for the time being. You know, Mac said I if he wins some games, people would start hugging him. I'm, yeah. I'm sure there are a lot of people. I, I think the judge him. should re-examine that verdict we had a couple weeks ago, Mark. Season ain't over yet. <laughs> but perhaps Bob Stoops will be called before the judge. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> With many more performances Ooh. like that. The game. The last three meetings. Against Oklahoma for Texas, Saturday was far, far different. The Longhorns dominated this one, and perhaps in the future we'll hear a little bit less about teams in other conferences and a little bit more about things going on in his own backyard. Mm -hmm. After Texas put a beatdown on the Sooners on Saturday. Still, 